On today's episode of Let's Talk FGO, banners aplenty, Tiamat extended, Draco banner, and also Arjuna altar banner in NA. So many banners. All this and more in just a sheer moment. Hello, I am one of your hosts. This voice is Omega. I will be your Draco for today. What? With me, as always, is Lucky. He will be your mama for today. Mama's gonna drink. <laughs> Welcome to the part of where I do the intro joke that I am literally improv as we go, and Lucky is like, you did not run this by me. I did not give my approval for this joke. That's like, where that happens, either, like, <laughs> that's like three out of four times. Every time I'm just like, okay, this is what we are now. But yes, I am Mama Lucky, and I hope you are all enjoying Fate Grand Order, a.k.a. a beast of a time. And while we here at Studio Mega likes to bring you the latest nft related me- news and memes, we will be talking about the current and future events for the JP and Union version of the game. So anyone want, not wanting spoilers should sing like no one is watching. Almost did your intro backwards there. Almost! People, you would be surprised how easy it is to uh, flub up your own well-practiced intros. Usually when I'm recording something straight to script, I cut those out. But sometimes I leave those in. If you've ever watched a once and heard me go, yeah, no, I'm just going to leave that one in. All right. I will set up to farm a free quest while we're going. I've been farming this entire time, which is why I've been like half distracted. Yes, I think technically one of your star pip noises was uh, audible for a second there. Oh, We'll leave that one in. That's Foley. It's audio <laughs> texture. But all right, we're going to start going down the line of our usual start of the show business. We're going to start by reminding you that this episode is brought to you by our lovely patrons like Adam DeHarp, Black Star G, Call Me Zed, Carlos, Dragon, Ferris, F- Sicebird, Jeremy Vasquez, JDV9000, Just of the Fae, Jonathan Sandoval, Chris Starlight, Thanks. Legendary Boss Hunter, Regent Raptor, Rise of Kenji, Rogue Robin, Sharvor, Sean Pryor, Some Guy Named Bob, Fair in the Crow. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. Click the little link in the description. You can get this episode early and lots of other goodies, and it really helps us out. Thank you for your support, as always. We had a lot of uh, pre-discussion about business things in the pre-show. This is quite, not quite right. The game refuses to give me a brave chain on this first wave of one man. Anyway, had a lot of conversation about business stuff. I've actually started considering experimenting with putting the Patreon checker at the end. That's how the best of recaps are cut. But I also I like to do it at the front because that way I don't forget because I am a human man who is a dumbus sometimes. Anyway, thank you, patrons. Oh, good me. I'm a dumbus most of the time. But this means I can now close this tab because we're going to move right along on to our next segment, which means we're going to check in with everybody's favorite Kohai idol, Mash. This is the last week I'm going to make that joke. Senpai! Senpai! Oh, kudasai. Unless they do a rerun. Hello, it's welcome for Wake the Fuck Up, Senpai, a regular segment for Pro Tips. Today's Pro Tip is simple. We have been blessed by the lasagna gods with foreknowledge of May's monthly exchange items. They shall be Eternal Ice, Homunculus Babies, and Fool's Chains. Thank you for your time, everyone. Thank you. I think I'm going to end this month with uh, finally having more evil bones than God Spiritrons. Guess what I've been picking up this whole month? Same. Oh, God, you need a lot of bones. Okay. It means it's time to move along to Records on the Throne, our regular Chivo Topico. Now I get a brave chain, you animal. Anyway, simple stuff this week. Got my Grail, cleared the event, and my mix of smile is protected. She is max level. Still got a couple of NP copies out there in the wild point ladder, but we're working. Oh, that's right. They don't have a final ascension for her yet. Her the fucking derp. We'll save that for next week, I guess. Uh-huh. People in the future won't be able to tell, but Lucky's working on the thumbnail right now. Right now. If you're curious how we get things done around here. Obviously, you would have already seen the thumbnail, but it doesn't exist right now, which leads to this beautiful state of quantum superpositioning. What does quantum superpositioning even mean? Do you actually want me to explain it? Because it is a little complicated. (laughs) Yes, but no. Maybe later. The short version is, do you understand how Schrodinger's cat works? Yes. That's quantum superpositioning. Oh, okay. All right, good. You got the thought experiment. All right. Anyway, there's a blue line of text in my records. There is a blue line. Sorry, let me click back over here. So, on my end, it's pretty much the same. Uh, Grail get, and I got my mix at the NP5, as last week she had already been level 80, so... uh, Pachi, pachi, pachi for that. Yeah, you were able to uh, really streamline that point laddering. Yeah, I, I know you mentioned this in your notes later, but, like, I don't know. I think I'm able to brain dead some things easier than other people. I saw a lot of people complaining about the three, like, three point ladder. I'm just like, I don't know why it's kind of too complicated. I just do one that's the two of them, and then I just switch to one that's the other one, and then that's it. Yeah, I don't actually think it's, like, 
too complicated. Even my, I could spoil my note. It says it's kind of easy to no brain farm. It is a, it is still extra work to swap back and forth. And Lucky is blessed by having a lot of extra K scopes, which makes it very true. Strong. True, actually. Now that I th- now that you mention it, yes, there yeah, are that, some things I just go burr on. That that gets through the additional startup phase, which you know makes it go through. And for instance, uh, Axe is talking about how. Once you hit the 500k area, you unlock all the best nodes, so it gets easier. That's the, like, cusp I'm at just now. I've, like, just unlocked those nodes in the last couple days here, and I'm working on them to round out the points. So, it's a little awkward, but there's a few to work through. Yes, I'm doing a uh, double Castoria Lil Vinci node right the fuck now, actually. Yoom. Uh, Lucky's running, uh... Ooh, uh... One of my point sliders was definitely hamstringed by the best node for it, though, being a writer one. And hey, guess who the only bonus assassin is for this? It's Shooten, who is a limited SSR assassin. And therefore, I still don't have one. <sighs> anyway. Lucky is running the running the tried and true Summer Sashi uh, Castori and Tomamo. So. Uh, yes, uh, Serenity's not an AoE. <laughs> it takes a long time to kiss everybody to death. That's okay, we got around it. <laughs> Well, that's that's a summer axe. I don't have those. I consider myself blessed that I have a pretty decent um, uh, summer mave, who really helped my ass out in this event a lot. Axe, do you not know that Mega has like no AOE assassins? It's very well, done. I when I was oh, I decided to brute force that note. I put my fucking grailed Pison in there. I'm just like fuck it. Who needs a vet bonus? Let's go. <laughs> Grails will do the heavy lifting, baby. Which, it's true, I... they do. Uh, if you haven't checked what Pison's Grail stats are like, they are stonks. Her HP at level 100 is bigger than uh, there. Yeah, I do have an MHX, but again, she's single target. It's not super efficient. I don't have any problem bullying bosses. It's I need, like, rapid-fire wave clears. Do I have any AoE alter egos that are really good? None that are definitely bonuses. Also, I have, uh, t- my MHX is NP3. I also have a Gramps, who is at least MP1. It's just not, again, it's not the cleanest. But we've by developing my smooth braining. Oh, I think that's my last. Actually, I should have put that in my uh, records. I got a CE drop that I didn't need, but now I think I absolutely have like every copy of a CE and a special. So I should break those together when we're done here. Make this shit easier. All right. Oh, uh, I'm not gonna mention. Well, then we're going to move on. Yay! To uh, records. Of th- uh, not records. We already did that one. Uh, we're in records. We're going. We're skipping out all worlds evil, and we're going to. Did you finish your master missions? So pretty simple this week. You need to obtain 50 of each of the different three currencies, Emperor Fans, Muhammad Towels, and Quartz Pen Lights. Those are all three separate ones, 50 of each. Put a foreigner in your party five times and defeat 15 Sabres, Lancers, Raiders, or Assassin enemies, not counting servants or bosses. Certain story bosses, I should say. But it's easier to say servants or bosses. And then 15 Archer, Caster, or Berserker enemies, not servants or certain bosses. AKA, sorry, I had a hiccup in there. Do the event. Seriously, I have done all of these through the power of just doing the event so it's pretty simple they want you to do the event do the event everybody all right but that means we can move on to what i'm sure you are all waiting for scalagrams our news segment and boy how did we got some for you now technically i like to do this in usually slightly chronological order but i'll drop down some of the na stuff until later so we're going to start at jp there was a stream recently for the event the event has started uh we now know that this event is officially titled Lilum Harlot, Roses Without Applause. Yes, there are tildes involved. And it runs from the 26th until the 17th of May. So going for the full three weeks again. Actually, this one's kind of quite long. But it's a proper mission event. There are time gates and everything. There's a mission list. All the normal stuff you would expect. Full production so, value. So does it have a? So it doesn't have a map? It's just a list? Does anyone know? Uh, yeah, actually, that's a good question. Does it have a separate map? I s- don't know if I've seen map graphics. Because I was thinking about this with, um, especially with um, Grail Live. There's a lot of effort put in this fucking event. Like, the map, the backgrounds, everything. I'm just all like, do we always go this hard like, on every collab? It's a little nuts. It's a little nuts to me. Well, there definitely is a rising of production value in FGU over time. But yes, there are quite a few events where they go super big ham. And ham. Grail Concert was definitely one of them. And... It seems like uh, Lilum Harlot might also be. We'll talk about some of those things in a little bit. Anyway, remember, everybody, you only need Fuyuki to clear to, uh, to get in there. But there will be story spoilers up through, uh, what is it, uh, Lost Belt 3, allegedly. Do not ask me how that works out, all things considered, but that's what they say. 
So you complete the event to acquire new Welfare Saber Satanta. Called it, and I'm so happy. Yeah, everything's coming up Luxter. But yes, no, There's this is a Welfare event. There's a new Welfare, and Satanta, he's still a Saber. He is still the Welfare. He still has his dog. That is the most important bit. Thumbs up, everybody. And now the Tiamat banner, previously the pre-release banner, has been rebranded to the FGO Arcade collab banner number one and has been extended through the 17th. So it really was the secret banner number one, giving you plenty of time to work on it. And we have gotten Arcade Summon banner number two revealed, showcasing limited SR Assassin Locusta and playable beast class Draco SSR, a.k.a. Sodom's Beast, with a special animation and everything that is deeply existentially terrifying. Speaking of production value, I can't believe they've done this. I genuinely can't believe they've done this. Like, if we can take a moment to talk about playable bees, like, it's one of those things of, like, that always sound cool and people are like, oh, when we get in playable bees, and I just be like, nah, the triangle's sealed. We got everything fine here. And then they're just all like, nope, here you go. I'm like, we just got Pretender like a year and a half ago, people. Yeah. I've even- heard some people say that the, uh, the light works for the single as claimed beast would be the last class added. I would like you to cite your source. But beasts have always been really weird because all, each individual beast has its own crazy class advantage, right? Right. This is why it took them a while to come out with Pretender because the class that actually slotted in there uh, was Demon Pillars and Beast 1, which does also mean, by the way, you could actually get in there for, like... You know, Gatia, possibly. But also, we could just do Beast Class. Uh, For those of you wondering, specifically, Sodom's Beast is strong against all the seven original classes. That is Saber, Lancer, Archer, Rider, Caster, Assassin, Berserker. uh, But is weak against all extra classes. Not a full weakness. It's like like an alter ego situation. But it's times 1.5. It's still double damage to Berserkers. And half damage from all those guys. uh, But then deal half damage and take 1.5 damage from all extra classes. So, yeah, it's a really unique one. I don't know if they were holding off on this because of, like, what you call it, you know, programming restrictions or what. But, yeah, we were all like, oh, will it be another alter ego? Will it be Ryder? No, no, no. Beast. We're just going to do Beast. There you go. It makes me wonder about, like, I guess it makes sense in some of these because, like, our previous beasts aren't necessarily beasts. They're, like, proto-beasts or manifestations of a beast, so they're not straight up, but apparently Drago's just like, no, the full thing just came. All of it. You're just like, oh. Yeah, Like, even Tiamat, if I remember correctly, is just a a separate part of her whole. Yes, she is explicitly... Her full, like, card text is Larva Tiamat. So... And she has the infantile regression. She is supposed to be similar to the uh, the femme fatale form shown in the uh, Babylonia story. She is just a segment of the whole, not the full big you know, Dragon Mom Spirit Origin. Mm-hmm. Similarly, you know, the other such con- cases we've gotten are stuff like Kiara, who is her, she is an alter ego because she is explicitly, like, born from the last minute wish of her beast self to live a different life. So that's where she comes mm-hmm. from. You know, she is a, a a fragment of the whole, as it were. And similarly for the other section of Beast 3, Kama is just a normal heroic spirit, technically. Well, but, Kiara slapped her with something, and... Yeah. And we, end, we ended up with certain, you know, beastliness, but ultimately, you know, like we said, she still functions as just a heroic spirit, because Kama technically died, because their body was fucking obliterated. And, you know, there are other spaces to discuss with possible future beast candidate stuff. As always, we warn everybody about spoilers, so if you're not caught up on your Lost Belts, uh, take a pause and listen to our recaps as they come out. We're up to four. But meeting Koyanskaya in her, like, not quite all the way a beast form, and presumably her hitting her all the way the beast form in the Tunguska event, because I'm media savvy, <laughs> as I like to joke about by calling my shots on Final Fantasy XIV stuff, apparently. Done that a couple of times, it's a little weird. But, you know, we can, we can make assumptions without complete future knowledge just by looking at things going, and there's that very interesting boss fight in Lost Boat 5 Part 2. So, presumably the, you know, the Koyanskayas of light and darkness we see are, like, aspects of whatever that turns out to be, but, you know, not quite the original whole thing, because there's two of her, so, you know, there's diff- definitely differences. Uh, and we have no word yet on, you know, playable Beast 1, so we'll see if that works out. And hell, uh, I know there were... 
there were a lot of people, you know, thinking thoughts and maybe even spreading rumors about certain characters from Lost Belt 7 and Suspicions. This does pave the way for just straight up playable Olga Mary as Beast 7. I don't know well, if such yeah, a thing also, will occur. And also, you know, straight up just, you know, Beast, Beast Gatia. Yeah. You know. We've kind of talked back and forth about what that would be. I personally think because of the, the way the class triangle works out, it would be funny to have Pretender Gatia as, you know, King of Humans because he still looks roughly identical to R- Romani as Solomon. It's not quite mm. the same. He's got, you know, different eyes and wears his hair a little differently. But when we saw him last in Lost Belt 5, he was mostly Roman-ish. So, you know, that would be be kind of interesting and... and work out to see how that shakes but we will see because you know team had obviously went with the the alter ego system and so on and so forth so the, yeah this is just really interesting also i mean given the animation uh it's it's no surprise considering that uh or you'll call the upcoming story block is supposed to be involving extra classes that uh, i maybe see the reason why we're really stretching the summon system out y'all and it's 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 if you haven't seen the animation, I don't think it's a spoiler to look at it. Go watch the animation. It's spooky. They fucking kill the lights. It's very dramatic. Yeah, no, the when the circles just go out, it's just one of those moments of oh boo and you're like, What? Man, talk talk about your gut check. Like it's it's like they took the fucking Kiara hijacks BB's spirit origin to the next level. You already thought that was a gotcha. This is like, nah, we're gonna step it the fuck up. It's like it's like it's like Draco hijacked the new <laughs> like you're not trying to summon her. She's just like, no, I appear now. And uh, speaking of Draco, her ascension images and sprites seem to be story locked once again. The only ones you can access right now are number one and number two. You can obviously ascend her the whole way, but you can't see some of the stuff until you get further. I believe uh, Doman is the same way. So you know, there's there's certain limitations in place, which is really interesting. Also, yes, people have pointed this out earlier in our chat, but I'll bring it up now for her trait effects the first two ascensions are at least hard coded to be the childlike servant but that's only the first two ascensions there's a there's code gaps that it's you know it's like a per ascension flag not a generic flag so uh it seems like she'll be joining the number of servants who have different traits depending on what ascension they're in also funnily enough she is uh has is an animal traits uh servant so is useful in tunguska which is a main interlude and uh, also has synergy with Koyanskaya. Though, funnily enough, I believe she her append skill is anti-caster. <laughs> we couldn't possibly be upset about something. Also, by the way, uh, FGO once again continues to stay in the number one slot over, like, newly released Honkai Star Rail and, you know, other major things. I believe Nikkei's having a really huge banner right now. Yeah, Nikkei is number two right now, if I remember, yeah. if I remember that graphic correctly. Star Rail yeah, we're is so- number three. I'm hearing people are not as hot on Star Rail as people as we thought. No! Legendary, get rid of it! Send it back! Send it back! I do not need emotional damage! Dorothy is getting those numbers. I spent my entire stash on her, and I only got two copies. Oof. No, I will not report this to Discord's trust and safety team. I'm just removing it from <laughs> Yes, reported for causing emotional damage. I wonder if they actually get those No, reports. it's it's an all-or-nothing report flag. Oh, gay. Okay. Yeah, I won't go there. All right. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. I think uh, something was going on with like uh, Dokkan Battle as well, the the DBZ one, and you know FGOs being big hype, uh, and obviously continues to be big hype. I've talked about this, but in again, it's obviously slated, you know, for where I am. But I want to say that I have seen much like I saw Tiamat trending all through last week. I have seen Draco trending for the last couple of days, which seems to be the way to do it. Because, uh, again, the servant's name is Saddam's Beast slash Draco. In battle, that is shortened to Draco, just like Larva Tiamat is shortened to Tiamat. So uh, Draco seems like it's a, it's the a, a, the official shortening. But, yeah, no, fucking wild. There's so much here. Like, just technically the idea that, that it is coded into the game that there is now a gold symbol version of Beast that you can actually just summon and that it... Seems like it is correctly coded to have the beast's unique, you know, class strengths and weaknesses. It's wild. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. And um, we'll talk about it later after mailbag, as we usually do. Or you can jump to the time codes now if you really feel like it. But, like, 
make sure to come back and watch the rest of the news. But they're, they're not, again, they're not skimping either. They created an entirely different SSR unit who does, uh, we, I think we were talking about this last time, like, oh, will, you know, Tiamat and Draco compete? No, they have managed to design them completely different niches. It is really interesting. But also, hey, Lacusta. Yeah, I was actually, this was my actual shock. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone and their mother called that Draco was going to show up. I mean, they had and... Sakura Tange at the fucking... Yeah. The, the show. Yeah, but we no, all knew. We all knew. So, and like I said, you know, I held him with my heart of hearts that... uh, mm, No, that's a that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, And I had knew, I had in my heart of hearts that Satanta would show up. But Lacusta, I was all like, hey, it's Nero's BFF! Yeah, uh, they went for a slightly different uh, style than I would have thought. Yeah. But still going for that, the... the uh, evil best friend Gremla energy. Yeah. Yes, I did combine Gremla, Gremlin and energy there. Gremla energy. Uh, no. First of all, because that's not how a uh, a Gripena looks. There's there's like concept art of of Nero's mom out there for like extra and stuff. Basically, it's like imagine Nero but with uh really long hair and somehow even bigger tits. Uh no. Um, I think Axe means in their roles in Nero's life. Oh yeah, they're a little different. But I mean, uh, a Gripena employed a. Uh, Lacusta first. But yes, no, there's a fan servant Friday of Lacusta, and honestly, we'll talk about it again later, but their design for this servant is pretty on the notes for where I was was thinking of taking this anyway. They do end up, I'm not going to say it's incorrect, because I, in the actual history, Lacusta is very focused on mushrooms. Poison mushrooms are a really easy source of poison. Uh, I personally think the actual, like, individual story of the feather that killed the, the previous emperor, I forget which one it was. Was it Claudius? Might have been Claudius, one of those fancy pants ones, the ones you know the name of. Uh, he was allegedly killed with a poison feather arranged by Lacusta. The feather was poisoned, uh, so that because it was the vomiting aid for when you got poisoned normally, it was a double poisoning. Uh, this one is much more focused on mushrooms in general, but I suspect that's because it makes for a lot of meme energy. My first thought when I saw this little short, speaking of shorts and doing good work, uh, FGO kills it with their little shorts scheme they do for servants now. They've really got on top of that multimedia push. But uh, when I first saw it, I was like, is this like, you know, a Nasu self-insert? Because, chat, if you don't know, there's a pun there. Uh, Nasu's name, I'm, I'm reasonably certain the characters aren't the same as Mushroom, but Kinoko, as in Kinoko Nasu, is phonetically the same as Mushroom. So this is where all the jokes about Nasu being a Mushroom come from, and also probably why Lokusta is so super heavy on the Mushroom energy, but it's still appropriate. And we're going to talk about it later. But also, again, no slouch. This is, this is, they're, they're still busting out new shit. I know, to bring this back to a subject from last week, some people have, have, you know, left some comments back and forth. Someone said, you know, FGO might not be dead, but I don't know if it's healthy. And like, not playing in the JP ecosystem, I can't know for sure. But also, I would argue a decent number of JP players in English can't know either, because as strongly evidenced by the fact that, you know, Apple Marketplace and Google Play and shit are really trying to cut people who are not in the appropriate market for, you know, taxes and billing out. They're not necessarily the intended audience either. If there's some actual, you know, you live in Japan, JP players out there listening to this show somehow. First of all, hi, hello. But second of all, if you could give your opinion on that, I would love to hear it straight from the source. Almost said the horse's mouth, but even though while that's a common English idiom, that might be slightly unfathering. But... I definitely feel like FGO still has some zeal, still has some lust for life in there. The devs are still, like, trying new shit, doing new moves, and ramping up their their production value. It's just kind of interesting to see where our, like, three-week schedule works out to all of this. And I'll, I'll, I think there's some, some commentary about stuff going on currently in NA right now that'll wrap back that around. If you are a little dissatisfied with how JP is going, I think there are some, like questions about some of the stuff they're doing that I'll, I'll bring up but in general I like I said I still feel like they've got some some sh- shots to shoot as it were like they're still coming up with new shit Tiamat had some new technically like you know brand new debuffs that were actually being utilized by players there is brand new shit involved in Draco and in uh Lacusta it's it's interesting and well that wraps up our JP news statements for the time being we do have some NA stuff as well. NA is keeping on keeping on. We do have a little bit of prep work to do if we're going to actually launch Lost Belt 6 in June and 
fire off our anniversary in a timely fashion. First of all, part two, chapter one through four, Memorial Pickup Summon from the 25th until the 7th of May. We got some extra Bannerinos. And this one has got people, like before the Draco announcement, this was the thing that really got people vibing. So they announced a Mothman and Atalante altar banner. Okay, cool. But also Arjuna altar and Valkyrie banner, which will have just started by the time you're listening to this publicly. Or if you're listening to it live for our patrons in chat, if you don't know, it's going to start in a couple hours. And this is an all new extra Arjuna altar banner that was not in JP. Here it is, everybody. The coveted Arjuna Altar Manor. You've all been waiting for it. You were all saying Thanksgiving, but nay. The chapter, uh, the part two, chapter one through four memorial pickup summit that you didn't know existed. So yeah, that's you know pretty hype for NA. I think it continues NA's trend of realizing certain servants didn't get opportunities to have banners in, extra banners in JP and fixing it. You know, adjusting so there are extra summon banners. Obviously, over the years, uh, by the way, this show's been, you know, because it's about the same lockstep to FGO. This show's been going for almost like six years. So uh, over the years, we've certainly had back and forth with people about like, okay, so new servants are really cool, but also reruns are really neat for limited servants, right? And for in-demand units. And I feel like a lot of people were concerned. It doesn't feel like the right word, but people were not necessarily happy about the fact that like, Arjuna Altar took a long time to come back, right? Yeah. Like, there was a lot of scarcity, a lot of demand for him. And so people, like, obviously went really in on on the those initial banners, but have also been like, God, I hope he has an extra banner. Well, here it is. And if you are like, but this is a bad time. Well, that is unfortunately what happens when you get extra banners. Yeah. This is, this is what it's like when you don't got clairvoyance, guys. Everything is a bad time. But more opportunities does mean, you know, you can hip fire some more like seasonal spending. Maybe you've got some tickets saved up for something or just you can understand that like, oh, I've got an opportunity now, but it's not a good time. I'll take the later opportunity I know is coming, etc. I don't know if more banners have ever hurt the game of FGO. But yeah, so it's pretty cool. Actually, that's a good. Okay, no, I, sorry. I had when I said the phrase Bannerino that's in my notes, that's in the script. And Google is like, what the fuck is going on? I, I clicked it to see it's like. Oh, no, there's no, it doesn't have any suggestions here. It's just like, I don't know what the fuck this is. It's not English, fam. And I'm like, nope, certainly it's not. (laughs) But we have one more bit of news before we move on to the mailbag. Another bit of NA news freshly announced over the past couple of days here. But we've got the pre-release campaign for Grailfront, my Super Camelot 2023. The pre-release campaign starts the 1st of May and goes basically the entire month. Why? Well, so log in once a week during the month, so once every week for four weeks, to get a special CE. It forms a little diorama if you've got all four. It's really cute, but that's why the pre-release is running so long. There are Ozymandias and Sanzo banners that are running until the 8th of May, but still, good time. Uh, You get double suck and double FP on related servants. I can go pull up that list if people are really interested. But pretty usual stuff for a pre-release. And also, we've got rank-ups for Sanzo, Ozymandias, and Bedivere. Uh, the Ozymandias one is pretty cool. That's his uh, Sunshine Charisma. So his Charisma now adds sunlight to the battlefield, which is good for certain boofs. Uh, I believe, is it Sanzo's Taunt? Yeah, Sanzo's Taunt now adds uh, increases the whole team's attack. And Bedivere is going to increase the team's NP gain, and his NP Strength Up is now going to last three turns, which is good. And the servants you get uh, double suck chance, double FP for are Mordred, Gawain, Lancelot, Bedivere. That's a uh, normal Camelot Lancelot, by the way, not Berserk a lot. Tristan, Arash, Arturia Pendragon Lancer, Ozymandias, Caster Da Vinci, Sanzo, Nudacris, Serenity, Cursed Arm, and Mash. So, you know, the Camelot crew. Yeah. I believe this Grail Front was originally in JP, kind of a promo for the movie. Or one of the movies, anyway. Makes sense. So, obviously, we're getting it a couple years late. The movie's already out. Both movies are already out, actually. But, you know, it it still works out, and it's got some buffs to it, so it's well appreciated and got some time for it. Uh, Those would be pretty neat for that bed of your one. It was for movie two. Yes, okay. And obviously, like I said, that Oz one is helpful for certain strategies. And yeah, so it looks like, indeed, we are going to roll right into Grailfront after we finish the Grail concert, as predicted. No content droughts for us. It still, I believe, uh, leaves us wondering. Yeah, I don't have an Ozzy either, actually. It's funny how that works. Ozzy Mandy's is uh, permanent, right? Yeah, he hasn't spooked me, even though I got fucking spooked by 
regular writer Maeve. Admittedly, it was during a Valentine's banner, which is why she was in there all along. But, you know, it's still weird. It was not Maeve's raid-up day. But yeah, so keep your eyeballs peeled for that one. There will probably not be a, you know, big boy full pregame for the Grailfront. It's just, you know, daily maps and stuff. You can figure it out, y'all. You'll be all right. And we'll go from there. But that's all of our news. That's all of our news. Right on. Then Lucky will take control of this, and we will move straight on into this week's Let's Talk FGO Mailbag, the sailing where we read what you have to say and comment accordingly. This week, we have a healthy 15. I'm glad to see people putting stuff in. People have must have thoughts and feelings they must want to share with us, and which we are going to share with you. So without further ado, let us get started. <laughs> I bet half of them are going to be all like, what do you think about Peace Class? Well, let's see here. So this first one comes from Professional Idol, idol Servant Producer. Question, the Mad Lads little single did it. The Beast Class exists as a playable class container now, and it is with that in my mind. The question is, do y'all think we'll see uh, Gatia as an anniversary or New Year's Servants, or do you think they'll hold off for some story release? P.S. Am I the only one that credited the end of this events with Mash's inner monologue to Roman, or was someone just cut onions? Either way, this event was really great. Um, I'll answer the P.S. first. Um, Lucky definitely shed like several tears over this event at different points, but uh, Lucky cries when he gets emotional. It's very soulful, think of... very heartfelt. Yes. Lucky cries if he thinks of a cool scene in his head, so Lucky crying is not anything that particularly poignant. Lucky and I are like the, the red only blue only, but for crying. I really basically is. never cry. Lucky cries a lot. Together, mm. we make an average amount of crying. <laughs> the bell curve. The bell curve. But on the first one, we already kind of talked about this. Uh, with the base class now existing, it definitely is possible. But as Mega said earlier, I think it'd be more interesting to have Gatia as a pretender. Uh, but Gatia would definitely, definitely is one of those. I personally feel he's definitely in that New Year's or anniversary slot. He's just going to, you know, but he'll probably like show up at some story and people are like, he's there. They're going to Leonardo. Di they're going to fucking Leonardo DiCaprio point at at the screen. And yeah, then he's not going to get a banner. People are going to be like, what the fuck? And then, you know, New Year's come around. And everyone's going to be like, oh, <gasps> and then FGO will scroll to number one. I wonder if that's what they do. I wonder if they're actually holding off on servants because we're like, all right, we need a we need an income boost right now. No, I feel like they have their scheduling way too far out. It's just. Well, no, no. I mean, they they track like when like they track like when people are more likely going to spend. It's like, all right, they're going to spend at summer, maybe anniversary, and you know, maybe at a story release. I don't know. I don't well, know. What that's I'm true. Right they now. have a lot of back end data. Back end data. But yeah, so historically, I think Gatia definitely fits the mold of what we do for anniversaries and New Years. Right. Most of those are usually pretty heavily, you know. Story-related servants, obviously New Year's has a couple of breakouts, you know. Hokusai was never, like, super, super important to the story, but still was has been involved in a few things. Ha has been a strongly recurring character, at least. And, yeah, I could totally see it happening. Probably more around a New Year's, I'd imagine, than, a, than an anniversary, but it could really be either. I'm just thinking of, like, the parallels with, you know, Temple of Time. On the other hand, parallels with Temple of Time means I could also see him as a big story release out of nowhere, just like Merlin. I think it depends on on if the mysterious doctor from Caldea has been doing anything lately, because I feel like that's not the uh, the pet theory a lot of people have been chasing since Lost Belt five and a half, five part one technically actually, when we actually you know see him on screen for a little bit and then he's like, all right, bye, good luck with this shit. So I guess we'll have to see if his cameos keep persisting. It would be very funny if they somehow make uh, President of the Universe Yu Ogomeri playable before Gatia. It's a real case of last first thing, everybody. So I think that's enough of that. And let us um, move on, I suppose. Uh, this next one comes from Mesrick, who says, uh, Kukulain is by far my favorite fate character and Berserker Isle during Grey Life. Heh. Uh, I heard people say he could potentially manifest as any of the non-extra servant classes. What do you think a conceptual new Q7 would look like? I mean, off the top of my head, I don't, I, I don't really think of a fucking saber coup or a assassin coup, but there could, definitely could be a, a writer coup. Um, during the Ulster cycle, Kukulain Kuk was a charioteer, and he did have two famous horses. I don't know their team names off the top of my head, but I just know it's basically translated to gray horse and black horse. Um, as you do, yeah, as you do. Uh, apparently, they were um, gifts from the Morrigan, who is a peak uh, Celtic badass goddess. 
So, you know, there's some divinity in there. I don't think they necessarily have any big legends attributed to them. But, they're pre- I mean, they're fucking, they're Celtic horses. They're pretty fucking metal on their own. I'm pretty sure they can dig out something for it. I mean, you know, they've got a name, and that gives them a basis for, like, it's the, the two horses and the chariot. They can work something mm-hmm. out. They can work something out. And also, luckily, you don't have to worry about a sa- any saber coups in the future, because we have Satanta now. That is he true, I guess. Sword. That is true, I suppose. I didn't think about that, because I'm dumb. Uh, do you have any other potential ideas for a coup? No, not off the top of my head. The writer one seems like the the area where they could do the most flexing, because that's, as you said, a very important part of the Ulster cycle is, you know, Ku's role as a charioteer and his relationship with chariots. Hell, his chariot driver man was, you know, a famous hero as well. So there's definitely some stuff there. If I remember correctly, Ku was in his chariot when he got killed. Not killed, but took his fatal wound, if I remember correctly. So, I don't know. Maybe it could be something about the death of Ku. He could be, he could be, he could be anti cockroach. Maybe he dies really easily. The glass cannon Ku. Yeah. Glass cannon Ku. That could be interesting. But, uh, what, what? I'd have to look that up, remember. Lucky's been studying on such things, but I can't, like I said, I'm like, I'm not really good at remembering it all. But with that, let us move on. Thank you very much. This next one comes from, um, the current king who's definitely praying hard that Lasagna does not release Lilith for the first audio call story as he stares as a soon to be dead wallet thanks to it says HSR and I'm pretty sure that's a acronym, but I don't know what that means. HSR now with LB six music in the background. Oh, Honkai Star Rail, dur. Dur 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 dur. What they say? Question. Hey, Lucky Omega with uh, La Single breaking probably the biggest meme of them all and making Beast class playable. So they think we'll get costume for our former beast down later down the line. Also, with each beast class having their own parameters, do you think Gatia and uh, Uogo will have? Uh, that's it for me. Sending good vibes your way. Wah, 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 wah. And hope you have a great evening. I mean, I hope I would hope that we get that maybe get the old beast, the old beast forms as costumes. That'd be pretty sick. Pretty interesting. We've got, you know, I believe they are unused story sprites right now. So we could we could swing that for like comma and uh, Kiara and stuff. Mm-hmm. Just wiggle room. <laughs> What's some thoughts about? Uh, also, we don't know when they're going to release the first audio call story. Like, God, like LB LB seven was only you know started this month. There's probably like still at least a few months before they're even going to be like. Yeah, let's see. LB seven was super delayed, but technically that was the end of the year story. So there should still be a story release like a little before. Probably they want to aim for a little before anniversary so they can get those GSSR bucks. But we'll see. We'll see. I feel like much like the anniversary of the New Year's itself, they like to tent pull at least two. All right. Okay, they did say late spring. Okay, well then we're hoping. Oh for... Jesus, you're fucked. That would actually. Well, that might actually work out with the collab, but that would probably have to be sometime next month then, technically. But still, yeah. Uh, I also yes, yeah, somebody brought this up in chat. You're talking about like what the what the actual class thing. If Gatia was a beast class, that's all the demon pillars, which is it's not quite, but it's basically the pretender line uh, with added you know spiciness versus rulers and avengers. But it's mostly, you know, knight class go down, cavalry class go up, and his nega skill, gosh, which one was it called? Was it just nega hero? It would probably just be basically, like, give him a passive NP damage resistance, which would be very fun as a playable unit, like a passive, like, 20% less damage from NPs or something. Hell, honestly, NPs are such an overkill. You could probably make it, like, 40 or 50%, and it still wouldn't matter. (laughs) But, you know, just, just give him a little bit of that, and... I don't know if we have a firm enough grasp in NA about what you Olga does, so I think we'll put a pin in that one, maybe. Hold off on that, eh? Yeah. But also, yes, please give me some, give me some space between. I will say, give me some space between fucking Draco, Tiamat, Matt, and and Lilith. I'm still pretty sure that's Lilith. I do find it interesting that they use Lilim Harlot as the um as the um the 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 uh, title. Uh, so who knows? That means it's that means it's you mean that you mean it's in their oeuvre. Uh, if people do not know, Lilith is usually what is referred to as a child of Lilith, uh, because uh, Lilith is one of the um, ye, uh, you know, ye old fabled mother of monsters. Yeah, uh, and it's where uh, we get a lot of syncreticism with succubi and whatnot from. So let us move on, though. Clap, 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 clap. Uh, this next one comes from Moon is baking a macadamia cake. Oh, I hope that's going well with you. But they say, Hello there, Lucky Omega. Hope you're doing well. Are there any nuts you'd like to snack on? Recently started trying pecans, and I've been loving them. I go to our cashews and sunflower seeds. Are you a nut guy, Omega? 
Not hugely, but I've kind of turned around on some. Speaking of uh, pecans, uh, it's something we do in this house occasionally. It's just, you know, oven oven roast pecan with a little bit of but- butter and salt. That's pretty good. I also do actually eat peanuts, but that's slightly different. We're not even going to get into the what's a legume discussion here. Uh, uh, I think my I think at the top of my list is probably cashews. I like cashews, especially if they're like honey roasted. Honey roasted cashews are a thing. Uh, after that, hmm, I'm not sure. Actually, I can't even remember all my all my nuts now. I just remember cashews. And there's macadamia nuts, but macadamia nuts are expensive. Can't buy a lot of those. There's hazelnut, Brazil nut. I've never. I don't think I've actually had just raw ha- uh, hazelnuts, and I've never had a Brazilian nut. Yeah, I don't think I've ever actually had hazelnut. Hazelnut. Obviously, stuff is hazelnut flavored, but yeah, pecans are good. Pecans. Pecans are the nut of my youth. Like when I was when I was young and lived in Texas, there was this abandoned church not too far from where I lived that had the biggest pecan tree that I'd ever fucking seen. And at, like every year when they um every year when they um dropped, I would go with my mom with like we get like as many bags as we can carry, and we would just load up on pecans and we go home and crack them. You eat the nut straight from the tree. Yeah, no. Like I don't know what it is, but like me just eating pecans now just doesn't have the same impact as eating pecans from that tree. It's just not the same. It's like how I don't like blackberry stuff unless, like, me and my mom go picking blackberries at, like, some location. Mm, it's the powerful sense memories or some mm-hmm. such. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, no, so I'd probably have to say my cashews are at the top of my list. Nice, big, meaty. Well, as meaty as nuts get. Mm, good source of protein. Yeah. Also, hey, I made an MLB event CE, and I got a great success. Great success. But let's move on. This next one comes from the Grands on Break because the beasts are loose. Hey, Lucky Meg, hope your week has been going well. Who knew the round table was such a potent catalyst that it summons even beasts now? Anyway, my question for you this week is, do prune branches know when they are pruned by the pruning theoretical phenomenon in what sentences? And in instances where humans travel to other planets, like Gilgamesh does to Hakano in that one route, does science become mystery again on other planets? Or does science intrinsically lower mystery, whatever it touches, and you just good spring vibes, and remember that the angry mango has extra bonus damage against beast class like Tiamat. Like Tiamat. So we had a bunch of anti-beasts at home all along. Well, we do indeed know this, Liz, but but um, what I was gonna say, things outside outside the rules of man are not governed by the rules of man. I will say, yeah, that's like, the best way to look at it. Yeah, once like uh, especially with like with Hakano and Gilgamesh and that one extra route, Gilgamesh is Hakano's service, and that's what's powering him. But that's all that's powering him at that point. Like, once they leave Earth and go to Man, Man Mile, they're not going to be getting any, you know, they're not going to be governed by the same, they're not going to be governed by, you know, Gaia or Aleia or the Throne of Heroes or any of that stuff because they're no longer part of it. It's gone. I'm pretty sure that's the, not that I'm a huge expert on this because this is a CCC thing, but yeah, I believe the whole point of that entry is, like, Gilgamesh is like, well, you know what? Earth's fucking dead. Let's just get the fuck out of here and, uh... Go, like, find some new place to figure out. We're going to start all over again and basically, like, go back to the, you know, the beginning era of some other planet. So, yeah, it's... And make a new throne of heroes. Basically, you know, start start new legends and explore new lives, so... It'd be yeah, a new system. Yeah. There's... What's the right way to phrase this? So, I think the idea that, like... You know, observation, categorization, etc. slowly degrades mystery. That's not universal because obviously, you know, humans have designed, you know, systems to explain things that were full of mystery anyway. I think it's just more that modern science is based more and more keenly on like ever more fine and ingrained obser- and accurate observations, right? So that that's why mystery is starting to stop existing in our modern society because we have like really really distinct ways of observing the universe and actually figuring shit out and that makes the room for mystery to be less and less. Uh, though obviously uh, I feel like the, you know, the general trope of oh in the, you know, the 21st century everybody became so scientific and unsuperstitious. Those people didn't realize how gullible social media was. <laughs> Humans still believe in a lot of mysteries and, and intangible shit. It's just in a very different method. You know, people believe in shit like the New World, World Order and the reptilian aliens instead of, like, gods and demons. But, you know, to this this question about uh, other planets, we we have been always fundamentally told, right, and this is literally 
how foreigners are pitched. One of their passive skills is called the existence outside the domain. Things that are not from Earth don't play by Earth rules. So, yeah, they would be doing their own things. If you took a human science to them, you might be able to make them make sense in human terms, but it's still... Nasu seems pretty keen on aliens as aliens, right? Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, there are no... I won't say there's no sorts sorts of systems in other in other worlds and whatnot, because, like, we've had, we had, like, types and stuff in our own, in our own system and stuff, which don't necessarily play by the rules of man. But, you know, capital M mystery is definitely kind of a human thing, I would say. Yeah, and that's not it, to say it, that it, aliens it, might not have their own mystery, but... All the aliens we meet are super intelligent, you know, pan-dimensional battleship beings, so... (laughs) (laughs) But no, so... Axe has really caught up on this pruning question, which is an entirely separate question that we haven't even worked back up the line to. Honestly, I don't have an answer for this. Yeah, I don't... Because to be pruned is to be erased from history, so I don't... I mean, the implication from the Lost Belts is that you don't realize it's going on. It just kind of happens. It's like, and like, the pruning might not actually be like something like tangible or visible. It might be like, because the theoretical pruning phenomenon it basically just happens when a world is it, just a point where it cannot grow anymore. Like, it just enters ceaseless stagnation. Which could just be, you know, how we see the Lost Belt so far of just one people stuck in one constant, one constant point. Like they could just be living out eternity, just doing that, or they could just be frozen in time. I don't, I don't think there's like a tactical nuke that goes off on these pruning phenomenons. They just either continue ad infinitum, nothing changing, or just freeze in time. The, the best guess opinion. we get is that it's basically like when the timeline reaches. QTL, quantum time lock time. That seems to be a point where we just click and then it's off. So, you know, there's definitely like some axioms there. And, but we don't know the exact nature because, again, the, the, we don't actually get to see a pruned timeline in the normal sense. The Lost Belts are unique special cases. Each one of them is, you know, simulated after they would have hit the split point where their different steps starts by the tree. So there's a lot of unanswered questions here. You're thinking way too macro scale about this. Yeah. We also don't have... This is the Fermi Paradox. We don't have proof that there's aliens out there, that there's civilizations of normal people in other galaxies. Uh, I, I would like to reiterate, every alien you've ever actually seen in the Nasuverse is of the, like, eldritch, unknowable giant form. And sure. that, that that may actually be, in the realm of the Nasuverse, the optimal way to have your civilization, because that means you take up more information, or less information, I should say, in the in the great cosmic computer. Yeah, so yep. what do you say they come from somewhere? Yeah, Velber come from somewhere. There's more also, out there. Yeah, but also they're like I said, the Olympians of Velber are giant eldritch super beings. Technically the Olympians came from a different timeline, I think, is how I understood that. But still, like they're they're aliens. They came from a different place. And their timeline was fuckled. Uh when we, you know, run into all the types, those are just giant aliens of like our solar system. Whatever the alien god is and the other like demon god foreigner beings you know are are f- f- the the elder gods the outer gods behind foreigners are pitched as like existences that are so alien they can't even overlap with the realm of man without some sort of adjustment so yeah there's there's no evidence other than i think that gilgamesh ending that there are just like blue humans out there chilling <laughs> living their own lives you know it may be that right now humans are the only like sentient species of our type in the universe and we're sucking up all the ga- the 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 timeline ram <laughs> and that's why the only other things we meet are eldritch and unknowable and maybe after we die some other intelligent micro scale being can come about uh but that does seem to be only a limit for our universe the servant universe seems very different for instance so servant i don't universes, know though. yeah the sure. multiverse theory is, is real not just multiple timelines but multiple universes so I I personally try not to be too bothered about any of this stuff because when you start talking about macro scale shit with science fiction and even with real life, as you know, you'll always be seeing stories like physicist believes multiple universes are super real and possibly observable. And I'm like, cool. Tell me when that means something. 
<laughs> when when you figure out what that does practically, let me know. Otherwise, don't don't call me. And miss me with that shit. I don't need to deal with that shit. It's like fucking simulation theory, which is also existentially terrifying, but also could possibly be applied to fate because it is actually also a simulation. You know, because it's not real; it's made up by authors. It's fictional. Fiction. Anyway, let's keep going. Uh so 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 so. Uh, this next one comes from mastering now wondering how Lysenko is gonna justify a beast Artoria in their quest to put her in every class. I mean, fair, but we still got a fucking backlist. Question. Oh wait, hold that thought. Excuse me. Question. Hello, Lucky and Omega. That, that's a period. There was no question here. Uh, more question for Omega, since Lucky indicated he tries to avoid future story at info as much as possible. Uh, but have you ever been completely blindsided by a pawn? Yeah. Have you ever been completely blindsided by something upon reading the story in spite of two years future sight and enjoys? Speaking for myself, I had uh, no idea Mixa had sprite work for a powered up version that is unplayable at the time at this writing right. Figuring, figuring that's ultimately going to be a, a uh, Sentient or a Double X Alter, either in Summer or Saber Wars 3 event. I mean, on this point in particular, no, I was blindsided as well, because guess what? Like, Lucky doesn't consider, like, servant info spoilers. Usually it's much more story-related things. But no, um, we'll talk about this later. But no, when I saw that, I was just like, what the fuck? And I'm, like, scrolling through things trying to see if, like, is there a costume unlock somewhere? Uh, yeah, spoilers, no, we'll have, not. yeah, we'll have commentary more about that about the event itself when we talk about our final thoughts. But yeah, that was another one that I was like, what? Where did this come from? Because obviously the internet likes its super clickbait screenshots and I've seen and heard stuff. Um, but I mean, to answer this question, I would actually, I, I know I'm shilling the, the best of comps, but actually do go listen to those because this is a lot of what our discussions are about. Because our future site is weird. You know, mostly it's just promo materials, so obviously whatever FGO itself is willing to admit to the public. And then just story impressions. There have been a few story instances where I have been just straight up confused or misled or just nobody could come on a consensus what the story actually was, like what characters were doing where, either because people are speed translating or they think they can get away with something wrong as just a joke or they're trying to push some kind of narrative i don't know but like talking about i think lost belt threes and fours for instance um you know i was talking about how i was vaguely aware of story beats but there was still stuff that was like really unclear like in three i think i understood you know some of the memes about spartacus jumping already because that's like a story cg and stuff and i knew spartacus would be involved in the event and I must obviously against gravity Yes, and obviously, you know, Chin Shi Wong is the summonable servant, but I feel like there was a lot of, like, mistranslation and misinformation about what the order was. Like, so many people must have had some kind of weird agenda about Pison being a true ancestor or not a true ancestor, or, just as usual, the script could have been written really ambiguously in Japanese, and then when they localized it, they hammered it all out and were just like, she is an elemental. It's like a true ancestor, but don't care about the proper nouns anyway. But like that was that's usually where stuff is like, oh, so that's how this works kind of a thing, you know, and there's still some some big, big moments. I think like a lot of Lost Belt 4 was kind of a surprise to me because, you know, with the pro materials and the CMs and shit, I was like, who is Dark Neja? Who is Garu Neja? I don't understand this. All I knew is that that uh, Super Karna and Super Arjuna fight. That's all I got. And that's, you know, like literally the second to last thing that happens. So th there are definitely moments, you know, where I'm like, what? I feel like, though, event stories are almost easier for this to happen in because those don't get as much coverage and as much dissection as, you know, proper story releases. Right. And I still feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of misconceptions and weirdness over the years about Lost Belt 6. I'm going to hope to actually get straightened the fuck out. Yeah, I'm excited. A lot of stuff happens in this one. So I'm sure there was a lot of compression in the translating. Well, we're going to find out for sure, but I'm fair. I'm fairly certain the, I don't know for sure, like maybe it'll come back around and get firmly established, but I feel like a lot of people when Lost Belt 5 Part 2 came out were like, the barrel's the baby child in uh, Wodami's flashback. No, no, no. That kid is dead. It's very sad. But, th you know, that was like, whether it was, again, speed translating or people were just looking at sprite sheets or whatever, people are trying to invent a fucking backstory for Barrel that I'm sure we will get something of in the Lost Belt 6 because it's his Lost Belt. I just only hope to God they don't make me feel sympathy for him. Put him in the fucking ground. Um, shank my boy Wodama in the back, why don't you? 
shady ass looking ass. But yeah, like th- there is always these things. So I'm always like, even when I'm reading ahead and have foreknowledge, I'm not really reading ahead because it's usually like whatever f- spoilers filter through to us in like the first couple of weeks, right? So nobody doesn't knows anything when that happens. Yeah, I mean, like I said, enough. if they do wrap that around, sorry, Axe is saying something in chat. If they do wrap that around, that'll be a Lost Boat 6 thing. But that is absolutely not what the script implies. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry. Um, Legendary just reminded me. Yeah, I think I remember that fake spoiler that Raiko and Shuten fused to make Ibuki, which is not remotely like what happens. All three of those characters coexist in 5.5. Anyway, Lucky was moving us on. We will now move on. We are moving on. And we move on to... I look down and I whisper, Excuse me. Dear Lucky and Maggie, I enjoy your content and look forward to your show each week. Well, thank you. I have had a thought for the Evocation Festival. I think the series of events would be the best time for our dear co High to be able to get our coins to append our skills. What do you think? That is it for me. Have a great week and good rolls. Same to you, my dude. Listen, I just want Mash to get all of her stuff. More MPs, more Bond, her coins. She is very underappreciated, I feel. Mechanically. I think she goes back to... At- I I'm I know for a fact in six by clearing Lost Belt six we will finally be able to go back to regular ass mash and story. Yeah, How exactly? Great. Not sure, but you'll be able to like not be forced to pick the Ortonax mode in story content. And I th- think she gets to go to NP five as well. I'm I not sure. Know. I hope so. Yes. Um. Don't actually and, sell me. Yeah, we'll figure it you out. Gonna... And I think somebody said last time. No. Oh, well, okay. I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, but. Everyone, plug your ears. Um, but looking at the the bond list, it is yes. She goes goes to six after Avalon the Fey, and then you can level her up normally, and then you can get to nine after Lost Belt Seven. Oh, so her bond okay. level's getting up there. Uh, that does also having her bond level is how you get her coins, so you can get some of them that way. Uh, but yeah, you cannot actually do all of her uh her stuff normally. So I I think it could be a, a good one. I mean, there's there's some cute stuff they've added, like Stargazer's Journey, her passive to give you more uh, more bond usually is is cute, you know, and I think that they've got some some wiggle room, though I would also say that arguably her, like, even if they give it back, her default skill set is, except for the one that got buffed, are uh, uh, merely all right. Like, her her second skill is just a, it's a targetable invo, which is pretty good. And it gives them a 10 to 20% battery, but it's still like a seven turn charge. That still seems for two things. That still seems a little spicy, you know, compared to some other servants. T-Vet has a fucking heal on a two turn cooldown. We're getting, we're getting real cracked now. <laughs> so she could use some buffs, but on the question of evocation festival, I, I think so. If, if her bond level increases aren't enough to, to keep up, which let's see, it's like 20 coins for her bond levels past five. So probably not. What's the ratio you need to unlock a skill? I don't remember about about exactly what you need to unlock your append skills, but that might not be enough. So if it isn't, then yeah, I could definitely see them adding in like an evocation festival. That said, I think they usually save these kind of things for story events, though. That's usually how Mm. mash buffs go. I have nothing further to add to this, so let us move on. So this next one comes from Emiyachi no Kyo no Gohan collab win. I actually just got volume four like a couple weeks ago because they... During, like, the whole COVID thing, they had to, like, super delay it over here. I finally got it. And it is the good shit. I mean, collab, yes, but real talk, real talk, a UFO table, I know you're hard at work doing, like, Demon Slayer and all that stuff, but where's my season two of that? Give me my season two of today's menu with Emya family. I, I'll fund it my fucking self. I swear to God, I will. I'll kickstart that shit. You know you want it. Where Lucky gets the bill from an animation production committee? Probably. But they go on to say, Yo, Lucky and Omega. Hope you guys are doing well and mentally, read as financially, prepped for Gotcha Hell in a few months. I'm apprehensive of calling myself prepared because Gotcha is a cruel mistress. Uh, for my question, if you had to design a gag service a la uh, Jalter Santa Lily, what would it be? My big ideas are the Big J as a berserker akin to Nightingale. He'd still be a preacher, but have that ripped physique from all those Renaissance paintings. The other one is also Berserker Lovecraft, who actually wrote about tentacle hentai, but eventually gets censored down to a horror to a horror by an editor for publication. Wow. Uh, let's see. As a joke servant, when I think joke servants, I always think about that that special episode that they made, the one that had like you know a writer Diogenes and what was it, Berserker Plato, Mitochondrial Eve, and a few more. Oh, it was yeah. it was it was goofier than that. It was Grappler Plato. It was Grappler Plato. That's right. Yeah. 
the fucking uh, Pendragyrum wheel guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are funny. So, yeah, so it has to be something like that, but just, you know, slightly ridiculous. Ride of, the, Ride of Diogenes in his barrel is still hilarious to me. I'm just thinking of servant uh, assassins Socrates because he assassinated himself. He constantly asks you questions. Oh, That's see. a gag about the Socratic method, chat. Let's see here. So that'll be mine. Assassin Socrates for assassinating himself. Got it. Boom. Ship it. <laughs> mm, no, I don't think I can think of one on the spot. I don't think my creative juices are into it today. Because creating a joke servant is, you know, creating a servant, but that is, which is a gag. And I don't think I'm necessarily good at gags. So unfortunately, I'll have to let you down on that one. But it's still a good question. Thank you very much for it. Let us move on. This next one comes from a master giving a lay of the biggest middle finger while me and Diamant smother Draco with head pats. At this point, I don't think, you know, we, we started this conversation, you know, to start it off with, Alea basically giving us carp DM on servant, on servant, and just letting us summon whatever. I think we've accidentally stolen her fucking credit card and just ran away with it. We're just rushing, we're just constantly ordering fucking mail or servants from, I was about to say Russia, but that was probably not, not, that is not politically correct. But from who knows where, and Alea's just like, no, stop making charges, and we're like, never! Next thing you know, we'll just pull her out of it. Hello, I have summoned the collective unconsciousness. Ta-da. You work for me now. Make my en- <laughs> Your job is to kill doors and hands. <laughs> but they say, Hey, look here, Megan. This week is full of surprises and mind blowers with the queen- rival of Queen Draco. I'm really looking forward to the rival of more beasts. Speaking of which, my question this week is this. What is the function of faux paws? I've been collecting them for a while and I have no idea where to use them. <laughs> Sending you the good vibes. Wah, 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 wah. And we now must all fear when we hear the phrase. Boom, boom. Where Pope is Pope the so... to actually use them? It's it's an enhance. It's yeah. an enhance. It's like it's it's either above or below the thing that you use to do. Um, I forgot what they're called now. The things command that you attach the com- yeah the command codes. Uh, I think it's is it enhance command cards? Is the name? I'll I check think's... in a second. I'm in actually, the middle I'm, of a fight I... now, so I can't. I can't. I'm, I was at a menu. Hang on. Let me see here. Let's see here. So that's command. Yeah, there's there is a name for a specific menu, and what they do is okay. they increase your damage. Okay, he's got it. Okay, so yes, um, in the like, it's um, it's underneath the um, command card. It's command card enhancements. So it's let me see here. Let me count here. So it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seventh from the top. But um, Omega, you're gonna explain what they did. Yes. So uh, what you use them for is they are used to improve your individual command cards. So you increase your damage with that command card specifically. Oh gosh, I mean, I don't even know the cap on the top of my head without looking at it, but it's like fifty per paw, and it's up to a maximum of five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's really slow because you need a lot for each, because you've got five command cards and you need, you know, ten of them per card. No, it's twenty per per paw. Twenty per paw. Yeah, it's even worse. That's right. So it's not fifty. Fifty would be great. Where's that quality of life? Yeah. So it's your maximum is five hundred. Uh, you've got twenty per paw. So that means, let me bust up my calculator for some double math. So it's... 50. Yeah, you need 25 paws per. Oh, 25 per, yeah. And then for times the five paws is 125. And you get one a week. So you need 125 paws to max out all five command cards on one servant. By the way, it takes... By the way, it takes 2 million QP per paw. Yeah, that's the other thing. It It also still costs QP, and it's a lot. Uh, This is why, generally, nobody remembers to use beast paws. They are not. Uh, someone reminded me. Ethan, I'm doing it now. I'm like, let me, let me keep. All my Talamo cards are at 200 now. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is not very efficient. It is absolutely just a cute little thing you do for love. But yeah, that's what they do, and that's where you you use them. In case you've, you know, I know, I know we have some. Uh, I've seen a couple of newer people around the Discord are saying they're newer to FGO. So in case you don't know what the fuck that thing is, you get on. Uh, on. Oh, the amount of QP day. goes up. The more. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ! I can think of a different swear besides Jesus fucking Christ. I'm always fond of Jiminy Christmas. Similar syllables. True, true, true. But I am one of a few people I've ever heard use the phrase criminy unironically. Makes me sound like a Dickens character. I should start just start using uh, monster mothers and dark fertility goddesses. Sorry, I'm just in existential pain. Somebody copy pasted the chart. <clears throat> so in order it's in order to to add the full five hundred attack for every command card, you need two hundred and sixty two million and five hundred thousand QP. Oh no, Lucky uses bloody on bloody on the reg. Yep. That's that's one I've definitely stolen. Ooh, Liz Quartz. Liz is Bond 8. Nice. Eight. But yeah, this is this is painful. I don't 
I don't know if they've ever like actually like commented on how the paw system's not super popular. I don't want to call it a failed mechanic because it does what it does. Yes, that's well over two years. That's that's two and a half years, I think. Because it's one of those things that I really feels like is one of the biggest things that really needs to be addressed in this damn game. Yeah, it's just it's, and obviously I don't think they intend for you to use it on like more than one servant, maybe ever. But still, like like I said, maybe it should be fifty per. That mean that would that would you know basically have the amount of pause you need. But we'll we'll see. You know they have occasionally distributed extra pause, so they may come up with other shit to do. They've added other weekly login stuff. We've got an anniversary coming up. You know, right, maybe they'll you know, fix that's it. For this. Oh, I can. Careful. Safe. Safe. Uh, that is enough. I was trying to the, that pause there, chat that you probably didn't hear because I'll edit it out. Is like I was trying to remember what the gesture for baseball safe is, even though is, I know you can't see it. Isn't it like you cross your hands in front of you, and then you just spread them out to the side? Yeah, I think it's you. Just you basically wave over the plate like the plate is clean or something. I'm not a. I am not a baseball guy. Okay. We actually have quite a few baseball and wrestling guys in our Discord, I've realized. People, well, not a few, but there's guys who talk about it. Yeah. Now, you want me to, to signal that the, the, the kick is good? I know how to do that. I've watched a hand egg in my time. Anyway, we still got more mailbag. Yeah! Not that I'm, like, super concerned about the length of the show, because, I listen, I have been editing our fucking Lost Belt stuff. Those episodes are usually, like, five hours. I'm up to 2 a.m., <laughs> And I'm cutting two hours out of them out. So this is, this is a fucking child's play, baby. Mm-hmm. But we do want to make sure to get to all your lovely mailbag responses. Ye. When did I start going ye? Is that because I just start typing it in chat? Like, I don't say, like, yes or yeah anymore, like, in chat. I just go ye. Why ye? That's it. Is it because of, like, the shark vine meme? Yes, that's what it is. Yeah. I knew it was a meme you absorbed. I think I say that because uh, it got repeated in... Dragon Ball abridged. There's a there's a joke where like is it cause you know they're talking to Yajin Robe and it's like is it because you're fat? Ye. <laughs> that's 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 where I got mine from. Yeah, no, like the shark. Ye. But I'm just like ye. Also, typing Y E is way fucking easier than e- almost anything else. It really is. Soon soon people on the internet will just be typing Y and it'll just be. Ye. But let us go on. This next one comes from Procrastinator charging up his last startup to prove his cynical future self wrong. Nice. I may or may not be on an Imer binge. That's a good binge to be on. Imer's husky voice gives me life some days. Uh, they say good up. Look to everyone rolling for Miss Crane. Nice. All right, you know, I'll save that. Th- I'll save that thought for later. I'll save that thought for later. Um, there's not really much there. Lucky, Lucky has been a lot on his on, on his Anna song right now. Right now, I'm really digging. Um. Uh, Millets and a uh, man, a man with a missions collab on Demon Slayer. It is something I think is really neat. They did both the opening and the e- and the ending, but the lead, it, the, they swap the lead. Like Ooh, nice. it's I love when they do that. Yeah, on the um, on the opening, it's a uh, man with a mission at the front with Imer on accompaniment, but for the ending, it's not Imer, excuse me, with Millet, with Millet on the incumbent on the accompaniment, but on the ending, it's a uh, Millet in the front with man with a mission in the back. Like, it's really good. Demon Slayer is really good. Uh, it's really good, uh, this core. Well, I mean, it's always been good, but it's coming out with more stuff. Uh, please, yeah, give I it a watch. Get in, I need to get in there sometime. I, it's on my, my huge backlog of shit, which is not helped by just the general universe. Fucking Netflix sent me a notification like, hey, we know you watched this. Guess what? We are getting more seasons of Inuyasha. I'm like, what? You can't tell me that, Netflix. You only had like <laughs> two, and I watched them like a year ago. Now you're up through season six. I hate your guts, but also, please, yes, click a button. I don't have enough time for this. Ah! Yeah, Man, I am I'm really, I'm like two tangents slightly. I'm really glad my work does not mind that I watch anime as long as I'm making my numbers because I do that so much now. <laughs> oh, God. Like, I watch Ancient Mega's Bride at work. I'm watching Rokudo's Bad Girls at work. I watch Skip and Loafer at work. Like, so much. I watch so much anime at work now. Either that or I'm binging fucking, you know, rock alternative and emo bands. Like, I'm pretty sure, um, like, my, 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 my recommendations are getting skewed because I've listened to Welcome to the Black Parade, Foo Fighters Greatest Hits. Um, what else have I queued up? Now I usually queue up those two. Those are usually my two mains. I should try some other stuff, but Welcome to the Black Parade is so good. I don't care what anyone says. I love it. The whole thing. All of it. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're past the, we're past the three episode mark. I should probably give up, roll up some recommendations for what's up. I'll probably be playing Dead Island 2 tomorrow. 
And I'll probably not actually progress the story because I want Aaron to catch it up with me a bit so we can go zombie slaying together. It's fun. But it'll be good for you to actually show up Dead Island on the show. Yeah. So we, I, I, can, I can probably just backtrack. We joked about, uh, about actually doing Praetorium runs on What's Up, but I don't think we're going to have enough guys. Yeah, I don't want to do it with randos. Because I, believe yeah, like I think Axe is have... busy Saturday. Loth is usually busy that Saturday. And yeah, the, I don't know our what problem is. is we need healers and tanks because if Lucky and I are gonna are gonna talk and play that, we both need to be we, DPS. Yeah, I guess we. I don't want random tanks and DPS. They get ideas. <laughs> Not that I feel like there's a lot of ideas you could have in, in in the Praetorium. It's very straightforward, but it's true. But like I said, l- listen, Lucky likes control. I don't like it when things are out of my control. Correct, and. Having having experienced all the roles that are available in Final Fantasy fourteen, I kind of agree. I don't. I don't. Uh, I've, I'm much more comfortable even when DPSing. When you know, where where you know, if my my f- friend the tank has accidentally missed a pull, I could be like, "Lucky, there's a guy killing me," or you know, "Loth, there's a man here." Cue instant cursing and running around up the tank. Yeah, or when Axe is healing and we're like, uh, "Axe, I'm dying." <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, sorry." <laughs> Are we saying something? I'm like, yeah, no, nope, but I'm almost dead. Please heal. Thank you. God, uh, plus, you know, when we're in a Discord call, we can yell shit like, which is actually important in Praetorium occasionally, we can yell shit like, stack. I think that, that Thursday we did it, I think everybody all either missed or almost missed a stack at least once. Honestly, that kind of shit we should put in shorts. <laughs> oh, we were recording it, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Mechanics. That's what we need to do. We need to record as Braid Dead playing Final Fantasy XIV, not actually trying to accomplish shit. That will be a great source of clips. Well, we'll keep that in mind for future content. I'll keep that in mind, yeah. Okay. okay. But let's, uh, enough of that. Oh, excuse me. I just found a monster and you're doing, why the fuck am I? It's a clock. Why is that? That's right. It's going to summer. The sun refuses to go down now. God fucking damn it. Yes. Sorry. It, we've actually reached the point of where I actually have to consider, like, I actually, I have actually uh, springified myself. This means, like, I usually, like, you know, I remove my winter blankets. I take down my insulation from the windows and stuff so my room doesn't, you know, stay as warm as long. Because mm-hmm. the yeah. sun's, it's up, it's up when I leave, and it's up, you know, past 8 of fucking clock at night. So I'm just all like, yeah, there's going to be a lot more heat going out. Like, tomorrow morning, I'm going to be out, you know, working on Leon because the fucking grass is growing. I'm like, shit. Like, some parts it's up to my knees. I'm all like, I wasn't expecting this. How did you get so high so fast? Please stop. And yeah, the grass I'm is all like, we that, can... Uh, that's, that spring transition myself, where at, during the day, it's like throughout the sun blocking curtains, you know, dial up all my fans, and then the moment the sun goes down, it's like, okay, it's cooling off. Curtains go open. Window comes open. Suck in that cold air. Hurry it up. I definitely need to schedule some spring cleaning time. I probably need to uh, ply the sides off my PS5 and give it a good vac out before it gets too hot. Yeah, same. I gotta think about thermal thermal pasting my um my computer and boom. Actually, that reminds me. I still need to buy the parts to repair my PS3. But uh, that's enough tangenting. Let's get back on track with mailbag. So this next one comes from He Who Simps for the Queen of Simps. Hey, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the event. No question. Just stating that I wish that the music feature would continue after the end of the event and hope for the future, for the return of the Grail concerts. I agree with this. I'm gonna be a little sad. I mean, do they, does anyone know? Did they actually get put in the fucking um, the music player at any point? The real life songs? Yeah, this is something I'm unaware of. I've been kind of hopeful to go in the uh, the record player at some point. Yeah, I don't see anyone instantly typing, so I'll put that on hold. But yes, no, I definitely feel that. Um, uh, Mix says my galaxy. Mm, it's good. Nero song also very good. Nero Chris is very good as well. I can't remember like them all like perfectly. But... And that's why a music player would be nice. Some of them yeah. I can't even, like, fucking hear outside of the, now that the story missions are done, because I don't have those servants. Oh, shit, fuck, that reminds me, uh, rewind the record from the throw, I'm fucking leveled uh, Altera to 90, because and... I needed to give her her costume. Nice. I totally forgot, I, I forgot about that. Double nice, yeah. Yeah, no, because she was the only one that I couldn't give the, co- like, I had a moment, I had a brain moment of, like, why can't I put on this, co-? and I was like, oh, it's because she's still level one. No longer. Fixed it. Fixed it, but uh, that's enough on that. Let's keep moving. This next one comes from Soul of the Light Mode Discord. This person, he is not like us. Now I'm just thinking of fucking, what was the name of that song? It was from Metal Gear Solid 5. I think the band was named Garbage. Was it just People? We are are not not your kind kind of of people. people. Yes, it's kind of funny. Yeah, I remember that one. 
I think the second verse is better because it's like, we won't be cast as demons, victims of your lies. I'm like, God damn it, Coach, but how do you pick these? It's like picking the other one for like uh, Ground Zeroes was fucking, you know, nuclear, standing at the edge of a crater. I'm like, God, it's probably because he listens to so much music. Anyway. Yeah, no, like the opening, the opening is like very good too. Like here, let me just paste it. Yeah, and obviously all of the the this the entire soundtrack except for one song in Death Stranding is just a real life band music that Kojima found someplace. Everybody's like, "Yo, this is rad. Can I put it in my game?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure. It's real good." God, I hear that fucking "We'll Keep Coming." That tape click haunts me sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm, so good, Chef's Kiss. Anyway, this person. Has scripts, questions, statements. Yeah. Low Roar, that's who it was. Fuck, I couldn't yeah, remember their Low name Roar's for a second. Command. I wonder if they'll be back for uh, Death Stranding 2. I hope so. But they said, good morning slash day slash evening. It is definitely evening and evening, and it is night for Omega. It is 11, 11 p.m. ish. But they say, with the advent of the new Beast class, I want to ask, is there any savings that managed to inflict World War, not wallet-related damage to you? For example, because of Jason, I will unintentionally say, oi, oi, oi. When exasperated and annoyed about something. I hadn't noticed this until it had been months, and by then it had been stuck in my lexicon. With good vibes, wah, 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 sub, subpar, Jason. I mean, like, actual damage, I don't know what I consider damage. I'm pretty sure my lexicon has changed because I play, like, certain gacha games. Yeah, I don't, trying to, th- obviously nothing springs to mind, like, immediately, but yeah. there have got to have been some mind hacks I've I've gotten into because of FGO. I mean, obviously, like, even pre-FGO, the nature of the Unlimited Blade Works chant is a huge meme for a reason. That's always stuck with me. I am the bone of my sword. But mm. I'm trying to think. I know I know I say certain things because of FGO. Like I just refer to like pulling out like I know it's an FGO thing. It's like it's not from FGO directly, but I will actually say this in my com in, in my common tongue. Like people say I gotta burn my soul's fire for that. And some people will be like, What? I'm like, oh I mean use my credit card. Like I actually say that in my everyday. And I think, like, certain references and terms I just use in, com- in like, common, like, whaling. Where does whaling, where does that originate from? Casinos. Really? Whales, yeah, whales are your, are your quote-unquote, big fish spenders. They are the ones who, oh. uh, you, you suck them in, you hook them in, and they spend all their money, and they don't ever leave. That's, yeah, that's no, it. like, I use that, like I said, I didn't know the original, but, like, I didn't use that because of casinos. I use that because, you know, playing gotcha games. Yeah, there's a lot of general gotcha stuff that from from FGO first because I think technically I played uh, FE Heroes first as like a warm up while I was waiting for FGO to come out, but I was never super into it. But like I didn't really pick up on the on the language, but you know like there's so much that I've I've gotten from that. I think I still refer to a lot of the currency. Like sometimes I'll remember it's gems, but a lot of times in premium currency I'll call it quartzes. I was like, we're talking if we're talking terms, about like other. We're talking like gotcha to gotcha games. Like, there's some terms I use like ubiquitously. Like, like even if they're not necessarily called like gems or crystals, I usually refer to most like in-game currency as some sort of gem or crystal. Like, the t- I use the term spark for give or hitting the pity. Usually, I picked. I remember I picked that up from Grand Blue uh, Fantasy. Yep. When I played that. Uh, no, gotcha games definitely like have like I know have had um some impact on how I speak about things, but unfortunately because they are just hard coded into me, I can't think of them specifically yeah and i can't think of like servant specific mannerisms that i've stolen other than just in general and this has nothing necessarily to do with fgo because uh you know extella and stuff but like in general you know uh the performance of of tomomo as a character like there's a lot of her tomoisms that i just remember i can hear tomo shuck in my head stuff like that stop stop please you know shit like that like I, I can't talk about like in my real world, but I definitely, I definitely type umu and chat because of Nero. Mm-hmm. Like, just mm. like, cause if people notice, like, I'm people will say like when I, when I'm trying to be like, you know, serious, I'm like, I just go umu. It's like a shorthand of like, yes, I understand. But I guess that probably counts. The, the, the umuing has, has definitely entered again. At least my internet slang. Yeah, my internet slang, real world slang. I'm not sure. Probably not because just my, even before fate. And FGO, my hard, I already built up my hard-coded real-life pause wording, repeating myself, hmms, ums, uh, ah. And yes, I have, not even as a thing, just done, I, I noticed in the edits for some of the Lost Belt recaps, sometimes I will just go, ah, as like, I'm starting an ah or an um, and then I cut myself off. So yeah, it makes, it makes the meme. Dreams make the memes. See, now I'm going to be thinking about this at 2am tonight, just be like, 
What the fuck do I say? Good job. This language. Lingua Franca. I should really go play a fucking Phantom Pain again. I got a little bit into it late last year, and then this year of video games happened. So, we're going to move on. This next one comes from Agent 418. Oh, they're not at the bottom. The time where the timeline has changed. But they say, hello, Lucky Namega. We finally got Berserker 2, and there is a single target arts looper. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's a pretty good joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have a good weekend. P.S. Watch the best of. Did my voice, did my audio situation just change? What the fuck? You sound normal to me. I, I'm, okay, it must just be subconscious then. I don't know. Also, sometimes stuff does glitch out a little bit. Mm. Okay, two more. Okay, so I was going to read the next one, but it starts off with something weird, and I don't get it. I I mean, they're doing the thing we say not to do, which is include audio jokes. Yeah, I don't get it. So I'm going to... I won't I won't throw your thing out the window, but I'm going to skip your alias. They say... They say... Question. Is there any character you are grailing that you didn't plan to at first, but changed your mind after getting many copies of them? <laughs> I just realized I got my MP20 Saber Lily, and I'm just like, let me just max her out completely, because I got this many of her. All her skills are 10, 10, 10, and extra skins are 10, 10, 10, and now she's level 100. And I still have 140... Saber Lily Seven Corns. Yes, she is Bond 10. I wish everyone good luck on the rolls and pray, pry, don't pry my wallet, pry that wallet, wall, Lucky's wallet is okay. Omega sends you, spend, the Omega spends some more you wallet wants to be spent. JK, this is where the fun begins. We got a little weird there with the grammar. What are you talking about my wallet? <laughs> my wallet is secured. It's locked away, sealed up. And also, no, like, you talk about, like, 20 uh, Saber Lilies. I don't, I don't spend on the friend point gotcha that much. I don't. I save up. I'm saving up for when Seraphim Coins become a, like, casting Grails become a thing. Also, I think chat should know that just because you roll a lot of something does not necessarily mean you give it attention, because you roll a lot of a lot of stuff. I infamously, however many long you had a level 1 NP5 regular Artoria. <laughs> also, like, I also have this stupid weird look. Um, I still haven't gotten a fifth copy of any, I mean, a sixth copy, excuse me, of any SSR. Yeah, you so I'm just like... We, we talk about that one a lot. So I'm just like, eh. And uh, for me, you may have heard me uh, chuckle in there when they said, basically, you get super superfluous copies. Like, there are probably a few four stars I've leaned on a little harder because I've gotten some extra, you know, NP copies out of them. But it, no, not really. I don't actually get a lot of, like, rando extra copies out of people. No, no the fact that I have eight, I, I have the legendary eighth Steno does not mean that I use th Steno more. That does not solve my assassin problem. That doesn't solve any problem, I'm gonna be real. Just show, insert a picture here of Stena with the caption, causes problems on purpose. <laughs> no, I usually grail units that I uh, use a lot of first and then, you know, go from there. Yeah, with no, my like, my grail targets are pretty sad. Are they a comma, a tomamo, or probably some sort of right a servant? Yeah, they're probably getting grails. And Blackbeard, Blackbeard's getting grails one day. I adore that man. Yep, I, yeah, uh, no. I grailed up my uh, my Gareth. She's 80. This means I will be able to pretend when I inevitably don't roll Summer Gareth. Look at my shiny gold Gareth, everybody. Uh, I got Pison again because of the fucking drought of AoE assassins. I was like, fuck it, I'll make my own. <laughs> I actually have a couple extra NPs on Pison. You may rent for those of you who don't get that joke. But yeah, I, yeah it's just, again, the, the, oh, if you get like extra copies of people. No, not really. We don't do that here. Like, yeah, like, right now, my Tomacat's on their way to 120. They were able to get, I was able to give them a level during this event because, you know, she was on the double, the double, the, the double XP chance, but I didn't get a lot of double XP. Most of the double XPs I got were always on the very fucking last one, where I only use, like, one ember, and it's all like, level max, I'm just like, you sons of bitches. I know what you have done. But. Did I walk the son of a ship hard? But after that, I could go for Tama Lancer, but uh, like I probably am going to go for Kama to get to 120 after that. Then probably Tama Lancer, and then it's up in the air, because at that point, I think I'll be running actually pretty low on actual Grails. I'll be relying on Grail casting, because I still want to get all my Sakura faces. I would love to get, you know, Raikou, Shuten, Moriarty, Kentoki, uh, Blackbeard up. Like I have, um, I have a definite list of like those I want to grail, and not enough grails to worry up to actually do it. So all future grails are, you know, 
are potentially, you know, already snapped up. I should double check where I want my grails to be going. Uh, let me see. If I got, I think I got the spares. If I got the QP, and maybe I'll have the extra QP after the Lotto event, which would happen sometime this year, uh, I should consider uh, grailing my Berserker Musashi to 100. She could use that... the extra attack stat to get even more NP stonks, and also I use her a lot. Actually, that's very true. I should probably at least get her to 100. My summer, my summer Musashi is literally the linchpin of my arts farming team right now. Um, I don't know if I can get an MP2. Morgan's AOE arts, right? I forget. Uh, or is she AOE Buster? She's definitely AOE. I don't remember if it's Buster or arts. Spoilers. I know that's not for at least another month, so I have not written that wanted yet. <laughs> Chat isn't electrifying, so they're either checking or. Let me see if I can check faster. Waiting it out. Interesting. Sure, the only problem with accepting those those free. Gamer subs offers now. Those motherfuckers are sending me fucking emails. Ah, she's Buster. She, yeah. I always throw me off because she's very blue. I, and I assume she has to have at least two arts cards. Uh, yes, she is a quits arts arts Buster Buster. A saber style deck, you say? Funny. Funny. Well, anyway, yeah, no. Junk. Then, then probably I should check. I should check the list of AOE Busters. Not AOE Busters. AOE MPs. A arts AOE MPs. Jesus. Haha. I refrained from saying fucking Christ that time. Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to stop saying Jesus is a curse just because it caught on. And also, there's a lot of people I know who use it. Like, even when it is not universally appropriate, that's what uh, Jay of Rubik's Raptor always says when things are going horribly wrong. Jesus! Quail is dead! I've been shot full of lasers! Sorry, I'm just thinking about this video today. <laughs> the Terminator uh. run was, uh, one was uh, ripe for the memeage. <laughs> There's just a certain cinematic artistry where he's just like, I'm about to leave, and a fucking T-1000 just comes over, and he just slaps death on there. Then we switch to another camera, and we just hear him screaming in the background. Yeah, he plays <laughs> plays heavy rock music, and then just, again, like you said, he smash cuts to a second perspective, and just you hear the distance because Arma has, you know, proximity audio, just, ah! <laughs> cut. And then it actually smash cuts back to him being fucking annihilated. <laughs> It's so good. The man's been doing this for years. He's, he he has his cinematic timing down. Nice. <sighs> All right, but enough of that. Let us move on. This is the last one. This last one comes from Monster Girl Aficionado, who says, Dear Lucky Omega, no question this week. Just sending you good vibes. Wah, 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 wah. And wishing you well. Thanks, and keep up the good work. Thank you to you two for being here. And with that, that is everything. And mailbag, mailbag, mailbag. we've hit almost two hours. Hell yeah. Which means it is time to take an intermission. Because I gotta go stretch my legs. Intermission. Yeah, I will do the same. We're resuming. Hello, we're back. I'm trying to make sure I'm on the pitch point for my microphone without necessarily stretching my mic arm out too much. Yeah, it's a little clicky, but I think we're good. Okay, we're moving on to uh, free talk. The talk that is free. All our talk is kind of free, but you know what I mean. It's not news, it's talk. Let's talk about new servants. You okay to do this just in the order I've got it laid out here? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll begin with a shiny new welfare. It's been a little bit. Let's get a welfare in here. So, for Sabres, Satanta has a somewhat higher HP and attack, so he's on the, you know, above average curve on both. Not super high, but not super low. He's Quick Quick Arts Arts Buster, with uh, good quick hits, but low arts hits, so his NP game is actually pretty good. It's, I think, in the high point fives or in the point six area. Because he has two hit arts cards, but four hit quick cards. So he'll still generate NP okay. His NP is very simple. It is a single target quick, which ignores defense. It applies sure hit for one turn first, and it lowers the enemy's defense based on overcharge. A simple tool for a simple boy. Very direct uh, applications there. And obviously being a welfare, the intent is for this to be a free NP5. So it's going to hit pretty good. First skill is a 10 to 20% attack up on self. Removes his own debuffs and gives him 10 to 20 stars. Again, fairly straightforward. The second skill gives him 50 to 100% bonus damage versus wild beast trait enemies. And 10 to 20% quick up for three turns. That's a big trait damage, everybody. And then his final skill gives him a two hits, three turns evade. And a 60 to 100% chance, so make sure you level this skill, to give 30 to 40% crit damage up and a big star weight increase for three turns. Passes are just magic resistance B and divinity B. He's selfish, doesn't have a lot of team-wide action here, but very straightforward. He has the debuff clearing effect and the evades that a coup normally has. And great trait damage. Good what I call anti-asshole hit. It's not as obviously as good as Pierce Invol, but it's ignore defense and sure hit, so that's pretty good. And he's got, you know, fairly normal buffs on himself. And, you know, 
Crit damage is good for three turns. Increased star weight for three turns. Pretty solid. Good little welfare. Very straightforward. And now let's talk about our banners. First, a sinister little gremlin, a dubious creature. Lacusta of Assassins. She also leans on the higher end of the curve for HP and attack. So not necessarily the worst in, in either of those areas. Fairly balanced. With a quick arts, arts, and another arts, and a buster. With uh, average hit counts and NP gain. Her NP is single target arts. I wonder if we're making a theme here. It gives herself arts up based on overcharge for one turn. It's pretty small. I think it starts at 10% and it doesn't go high, higher than like 20, even at max overcharge. So it's not crazy good, but you know, it's still first. It also gives the target 500 poison damage for five turns first before damage is done. Why is it first? Well, that's because this attack deals damage with a bonus based on how many stacks of poison the target has. It's plus 15% damage per stack of poison to a max of plus, it's either plus 100 or plus, I think it's plus like 120 maybe. Actually, no, I think it is plus 100. It's basically double damage if you have max stacks, but it doesn't. the math doesn't quite work out with 15s, but you know what I mean. And also gives the target toxic for five turns, giving them 100% more poison damage for five turns. So first of all, that poison is actually 1,000 poison damage per turn for five turns. And also gives them a stack, so you're doing at minimum 15% extra damages. And also you get an arts buff up first. First skill gives all enemies 500 to 1,000 poison for five turns. Gives herself 20 to 30% arts up for three turns and 10 to 20% NP gain for three turns. So her average NP gain is actually quite above average most of the time. Now, the second skill is where shit starts to get real interesting. You've got a one time three turns guts for one to 2k. Not a lot. Normally this is one to 3k, but still a guts. It's also a 300 to 500 damage cut for three turns. Did not see a hits count on that, so I think it's just three turns, 500 damage cut. And then gives her five turns of a brand new buff, Poison Recovery, is what it's translated hmm. as, where all damage that would be dealt from poison is healing instead. That's pretty sick. Yeah. So yeah, very interesting effect. Not just straight up immune to poison, but one of her skills turns poison into healing. And then finally, her final skill is a pretty... A decently big one. It's a 10 to 20% battery for the whole team. Gives herself a three hits, three turns attack buff to drop 500 poison damage for three turns per person. But it gives her demerit to give herself 1,000 poison damage for five turns. But if you use her second skill in conjunction with this, that's actually a 1,000 heal for those five turns instead. Pretty good. Pretty good. Like uh, she has a Prezcon B to increase her critical damage and a special mental pollution passive. It gives her... The normal debuff, mental debuff resistance is about 10%, and also gives her 20% extra debuff success rate for poison specifically. Uh, she's a specialized poison arts build, but really good for that, and will definitely find a niche. Because she's got the toxic on her NP, her NP adds a stack of poison. Between her skills, you're talking about adding, you know, another four stacks. That means you're getting your max bonus damage, and your opponent is taking doubled poison damage, so they're taking, you know usually several thousand from that. That's actually enough to matter, you know? Yeah. And while she does have a demerit, she can turn it into a positive, which is really cool. And honestly, pretty decent for a a tank assassin, a stall assassin. Stall is usually associated with arts, obviously. There's a lot of arts units with big, hard defenses, including Mesh. We talked about that earlier. But this actually lets you get your grind game on with, with you know, damage over time with dots. And she has a pretty decent survivability kit herself you know you you can turn that demerit into healing you've got merlin is a pretty okay stall unit but you still have to actually be like firing the stuff yes he gains np per turn but you know that means you got to actually be doing the things and technically merlin merlin himself is an arts unit it's just his buff is reserved for buster like he has an arts np and he's a caster so technically you can run merlin in your arts teams if you're going to try and use his np but uh, il his illusion still has like what minimum six or seven turn cooldown for team wide inv invul. I mean, it's a team wide invul for one turn, which is still pretty good. But anyway, uh, nobody has ever talked about Merlin stall teams in the same way that we talk about art stall. Speak of old memes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, the damage cut, you know, flat five hundred damage cut for three hundred is pretty good. She does have a guts. It's not a super huge guts, but she can heal and stuff. And it's pretty solid. Should be pretty cool. Obviously, you know, you know, you're looking for poison synergy, so they're out there, I'm sure. Chutin is obviously really good at poison and is an assassin. And there's a handful of others. Serenity is, you know, the rarity step down for single target poison assassin. Which I'm sure they get along very well. And it's uh, it's all very balanced, very decent. Alright, so, 
And this uh, last but definitely not least, this leaves Draco. New class, very specialized resistances, being obviously, like I said, being strong against the seven original core classes, but weak to all extra classes. Looking at the stats, she leans kind of high on attack and, uh, you know, a little bit lower on the HP. She is an SSR who only has like, you know, 13,000 max HP, but has like 12,000 something max attack. So that's pretty high and her HP is a little lower. Uh, to actually talk about star absorption and stuff, because usually we go by just standards uh, class curves there. Specifically, Draco has like 147 star absorption and 10% star generation. So that's a slightly above average absorb and uh, I think fairly average star generation. But those are the numbers if you want to compare. As for her actual stats, uh, she's got a gorilla deck, funnily enough. Yeah, bonk. With, uh, you know, above average hit counts. You're looking at 443. And also, slightly heightened NP gain. She is 0.57 NP charge per attack. So they're making up for those limited number of cards. And uh, honestly, it's not a huge deal for reasons we'll get into in a sec. Her NP itself is really simple. It is a single target arts. It has one effect based on overcharge. Deals extra damage to a servant that is of the seven classes. So that is uh, Saber through Berserker, so long as they are actually a servant. I don't believe this works on regular mobs, but servants take bonus damage. We're, we're basically talking about Enema Elish, but instead of a weird trait that means you're not weak to Enema Elish, it's just, are you a regular class? Die! Also, it's eight hits. And I mentioned that her NP gain is good. So yeah, very, very spicy starter in there. Her first skill gives herself 5 to 10% NP gain for six turns. Increases her critical damage 20 to 30% for six, for th- uh, six turns, or six times. Uh, and reduces damage taken six times. 500 to 1,000. Do you get it? You get it, chat? Six, six, six. The number of the beast. Uh, honestly, yeah. the this one smacks to me of a skill that's probably going to end up with like a buff somewhere down the line. Like I know that she's pretty crazy for her other stuff, but I feel like her number of the beast uh, skill is actually kind of mid because the way six times works out is that's like probably like two and a half turns on average. Obviously, you won't be critting, like, literally every move most of the time, so you can get some longevity on it, but it's only a 30%, so I don't know if it's really worth it, but it's funny. And the six turns, you know, 10% battery is probably worth it on its own. By the way, funnily enough, it has a seven turn cooldown minimum, so you're always one turn off. But the second skill, or a Pokemon, the Golden Grail, that shit's coming back. You thought it was just BB? No, no. Uh, This gives all enemies skill seal for one turn. And then it also gives all enemies 3k to 5k burn for three turns. Yes, you're reading that right. 5k. You're looking at 15,000 damage over three turns if you max this baby out. It also increases her own attack uh, 20 to 40% for three turns. And gives her the Holy Grail holding status. Not a buff or a debuff, just an extra status. For three turns. This is important for reasons. Uh, But just in general, that's a big burn. We have like already instantly found Tomoe's best friend. Now, the Holding Grail status is important for her last skill, the Seven Beast Crowns, which has the the freaky deaky skill icon and everything. I love unique skill icons, by the way. They're pretty cash. So normally, if you just activate this skill willy-nilly, all it does is increase her buff removal resistance by 100% one time three turns. No scaling or anything, just one time within three turns, you will be 100% immune to buff removal. But if you have the Holy Grail status from earlier, you get a lot of buffs. It's not even... Is it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? Yeah, it's exactly 7. I was like, is it 7? Yes, it is 7. Separate buffs. Technically, it's 8 total buffs, but, you know, you know what we're getting at here. So, you get a separate... Uh, wait for my line here. Uh, yes, 20 to 40% damage up versus dragons and romans. You gain 5 to 10 critical stars per turn for 3 turns. Oh, and the uh, trait damage is 3 turns as well. You are debuff immune one time for whatever. You just get a debuff immune one instance that sticks around. You get to ignore defense for three turns. You increase your healing received by 10 to 20% for three turns. And 10 to 20% more NP charge per turn for three turns. So remember how I said that you don't really care about her NP gain? (laughs) It truly does not matter. When you've got this chillin', you're going to be generating, you know, 30% NP per turn for three turns, which is basically 100% with the way FGO likes to round at this rate. 
So yeah, uh, lots of juice. And the the healing is an interesting one. You know, give yourself twenty percent extra healing received. For passives, you have Authority of the Beast, just gives you extra critical damage by ten percent. Independent Manifestation E for even more tiny crit damage up and all those, you know, resistances, 2% mental debuffs, and 2% instant kill resistance. Very interesting, by the way, that uh, Draco's Independent Manifestation is very low. Also, she doesn't really have anything, unless they're, like, hiding it behind Story Unlocks, doesn't really have any other super crazy, like, Divinity or other stuff in there. She does, however, as all the beasts do, have her special Nega skill. Hers is Nega Messiah EX, and it gives her a... 500% increase of debuff success rate. You will be debuffed. You cannot resist. Uh, once again, makes that skill seal and that burn all the more appealing. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention with uh, Aura Apocalypse. There's a demerit. I skipped it accidentally. It does increase enemies and P gauge by one turn. So it gives them one extra pip. So you're going to want to be careful. But for those of you who have used skills that have that demerit before, you know that you can get away with, if they're already full pipped, it doesn't count. They can't, uh, enemies can't overcharge. But yeah, that skill steal will stick. That burn will stick. It is very gnarly. So it's kind of sad that she doesn't even have more debuffs to stick. So making sure those other ones work. Uh, as I mentioned before, by the way, her app and skill for extra class is just uh, extra damage to casters. Looks like she's also the extra class style of just uses mats, similar to foreigners. That's good. Oh, geez. Wow. Okay. This is FGO. Are you okay? This is really good ascension mats and and skill mats. Like this is old school shit. This I I do wonder how much of this must be left over from early, like an earlier data mine version of the game. Uh, to get her to max ascension, it's uh you know the first ascension is ten dragon fangs, ten void dust. Next is ten snake gems, ten black tallow. Then you need ten bloodstones, ten hearts, and then ten uh gallstones and ten reverse scales. Like that shit's old. You may need a lot of god hearts, by the way, if you've never gotten that stockpile up, but that's an old pain. I don't think we have to worry about that one as much anymore. And this is pretty straightforward. Huh? This, is, this is surprising me. Well, I'm looking. What is her, uh, what is her bond CE do? Increase own NP damage by 30%. Cool. Totally needed that. And also, while, ha while self has uh, holding Holy Grail status, 40% chance to increase own, own NP damage by 10% for three turns when performing a basic attack. Cool. Absolutely necessary. Definitely need all that extra NP damage. <laughs> yeah, so in case you can't tell, um... Drago go burr. Yes. It seems pretty simple, but with an 8-hit arts NP, a not bad NP generation rate, a load of passive NP gains, and 1.5 damage and similar damage multipliers on the NP, you're looking at, like, you know, 3x the damage on, on her NP hit to a servant, most of the original 7 classes will probably get killed dead good, and some other funny stuff besides... She doesn't really lean outside that niche, but if you need to remove a boss, uh, Draco will do it. There is some just pure spice on this. And obviously has some very solid, you know, enduring mechanics herself. But yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure most most Roman servants are in the, the core classes. Uh, most of our dragon servants are in the core classes. Not all of them, obviously. I'm pretty sure Tiamat has the dragon trait, for instance. And you've got, you know... Six times damage cut for 1k. You've got a fucking healing boost. Debuff immunities and shits. Extra crit stars. Like, this, this is a very solid boss unit. Uh, the only thing she doesn't have is, you know, a conventional uh, piercing or sure hit. But I'm sure you can work around that. So yeah, I, I once again, I mentioned this way earlier. But I am absolutely astonished and super pleased with the fact that Losangle was able to take two servants that on paper... Sound very similar, right? You've got, you know, right. Tiamat Larva and literal, you know, called Mother Draco, you know, Sodom, Beast of Sodom, Nero. And not only are they completely different classes, they are completely different niches. There's no reason to run Tiamat and Draco in the same team, even, because they hit entirely different shit. I mean, I guess you could double up because Alter Egos hit cavalry classes, but the odds that you're going to need the Tiamat Wave Sweeper and then you're going to bring in Draco to just absolutely obliterate this boss may or may not be needed uh it makes me gravely concerned for what future story bosses will be like because this is a unit that exists in this game now at the very least i suspect that her as we've discussed her class advantage might be unique to her if they continue to make beast classes they will probably have their own you know unique respective class damage effects so that at least i don't think they have to worry about like future proofing too hard but yeah 
Uh, I guess watch the fuck out for those extra class bosses coming in audio call, probably. Oh, no. Because, uh, yeah, no, this is just fucking crazy. Uh, by the way, well, obviously she doesn't get her regular bonus. She does herself count as both Dragon and Roman, so trust no one, not even yourself. So, yeah, this is this is an interesting one. A uh, lot of stuff. Going to do a big bonkless. Big bonkle. And like I said, that burn is strunk. 5k, three turns at max level. You get a... You get a hundred percent, you know, spreading fire bonus on that. You're looking at, you know, ten k per turn for three turns, which is not something to sneeze at in terms of dots. So pretty spiced. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. That means though that it's time to continue our winding down, but not a full wind down because we got a few things. <laughs> yep. Technically, we're on par for a fencer and Friday as well. We'll we see are? if this doesn't go too late. Yeah, it's the last uh, show in a month. Oh, it's true. If we need, if we spend a lot of time talking about Grail Concert, we could push it because it is almost midnight here, and I do need to like get this edited and out in a reasonable time frame. I do not know if I'll be able to, you know, play some more Final Fantasy fourteen tonight. I want to get a little bit of time on the fourteen, so we can we can push it if we're super out of time. But yeah, let's let's talk about Grail Concert Final Impressions. That's you know in demand because the event is almost over. We're both done with the story. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff going on there. I I put a couple of concrete notes. Lucky talked earlier about how, you know, you cried at several points in here. I, in general, have said this this story has some real heartfelt and very interesting world building, mm -hmm. both internally to the, you know, the idol world and playing up all the a kind of, like, idol anime tropes, but also some real, like, deep, genuine human writing, the story of Miss Crane and her former master, who was just some rando in Paris, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that, and it's it's really nice, but I feel like in English, I'm missing some subtext about waltz that we just don't have, and it's a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. Like, there's some some tie-up stuff about Dr. Romani at the end that obviously it hits because it's Dr. Romani, but I feel like there may have been some, like, deeper context from what waltz's story was supposed to be that kind of goes over my head, right? Yeah, I, I can see that, yeah. It's still, you know, like like I said, pretty pretty obvious cut, and all of the non-subtext, the actual core highlighted text uh, about partings and saying goodbye and stuff, while it is a recurring theme of FGO, is still very important and hits very well. And in general, I like a lot of the emotive stuff. You know, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on with, uh, you know, Echan X. Obviously, that that's supposed to relate to, you know, what uh, MHX or Double X is doing back in her timeline and stuff. I've seen some people on Twitter being like, "Yo, MH Mix is dead," and I'm and I saw one great tweet response to this, by the way, which was like, "Yeah, most of your servants are dead." That's kind of how that works. <laughs> Usually, you have to die to get recorded. Uh, but also keep in mind, you know, the servant verse timeline is full of weird tropiness. So I don't know if it actually matters if, as uh, MHXA was, you know. I killed in the st in the season finale of Saber Wars 1 or whatever. I don't know if that actually matters for long-term story stuff. Just know that she is definitely separated from uh, regular MHX and obviously feels bad about it. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like 99% sure that's the actual subtext of like what Mix is talking about with her songs reaching a certain someone. Keeps talking about you know the Shining Sapphire Galaxy and stuff. But also, we brought this up earlier. I want to say we I feel like we are clearly missing a Mix a costume which would have given her actual synergy with Miss Crane, because remember, Miss Crane is a thing where she activates buffs and gets stars, which are important for her NP when you've got costume-having servants, which your welfare doesn't count as. It makes yeah. support awkward. Um, but I, I assume it wasn't released as a costume because it wasn't ready, because this was the height of... Speaking of things bleeding into my lexicon, I wrote this as height of COVID format. That's actually like a Yu-Gi-Oh reference to how people played the game when you couldn't play the game in person. But it feels appropriate. This was this was deep in the lockdown times. So, and I believe Grail Live was delayed. Was it de was was this one delayed a lot, or was I think it might have been delayed just a little bit? But they've had some delays with the collabs working through stuff. Um, and obviously, like we said, you know, Lost Belt Six stuff in the future was delayed. They did not necessarily intend it for it to be broken up into three parts. The script. Feels like more of it has a two-part break rather than a three-part break. So, that. yeah. Uh, oh, no, I, I think everybody's reckoning with the way that our our release schedule says in June that they're going to flow. It's almost always, it's definitely not going to have that that month-long gap. We're probably going to look at like a normal like one-week or two-week gap for the second bit to drop. I don't, or 
maybe there won't be a gap at all, and it'll just be the banners that are that are time gapped. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Walt seems like it has a lot of you know emotive stuff. And I, like I said, I can imagine if there was some trouble over, like, licensing the music, because obviously it's related to, you know, all these agencies and record labels and stuff that we see here, but obviously it worked for Core FGO, so it can't be that much of a problem, and it's just, you know, sad. Maybe, I don't know, you know, they get to look at the back-end data that we don't. Maybe they looked at, like, our FGO downloads rate and compared it to, like, what the download rate for Waltz was in JP, and we're just like, yeah, this isn't going to be profitable enough for us to port over but it's very sad we just can't get the story context and stuff yeah but um what i was gonna say was uh uh we must pray to the gotcha gods for a rerun so we can fix this oversight about the costume i've seen some people also take it as maybe like they're supposed to be like a mix a double x or something maybe we'll you'll see a sequel character as well but i don't know it kind of the way it's framed in story makes it really sound like it should have been a a a actual like a wardrobe change costume and that would mechanically make more sense for the way that Miss Crane is planned out. Uh, and I do want to say, and I think part of it we brought up um, earlier, talking about how it might be more that there's a there's a big early game hump in the point ladders. You got to like get across the the halfway point in each, and then it really opens up to the ninety plus nodes and stuff. Mm-hmm. But the triple point ladders do still kind of suck. They are definitely not my preferred way to do it. This one's pretty easy to no brain farm it's still a, a bundle of extra work to you know switch to alternate nodes and keep track of you know what you're doing it also messes with the bonus math a little because obviously your uh, point total percentage translates to a damage bonus if you have the ce equipped i think i misspoke last week and said there's no event bonus damage it is on the ce but it is tied to your ladder your points ladder so it that's neat and all, but that means that this is one of those events that kind of snowballs where it's a lot easier to at the last stretch, but that first stretch can be tougher. Obviously, like like, like you, you mentioned earlier, Lucky, you just triple K-scope everything, and that probably helps get over that initial hump a lot easier. Yeah, or um, it's either a triple K-scope or, um, or uh, Arts Lupin. Yeah. You have some very high-leveled, very well np would servants on account of I you do. burning your soul's fire. I burn that soul's fire, yo. So it does translate into stonks occasionally. But overall, yeah, this is just really good. I think this was a really good look at all of our 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 characters, you know, both our idols mm-hmm. all had really good representation and I kind of liked the unique feel that every every outfit had. Oh yeah. You know, you have uh the original Infinity Queen is kind of a weird oddball duo. Yeah, but like they just seem like a kind of two that is, you know, so- I mean, Cat can probably work with anybody if they put their minds yeah, except but Tanamo. Cat still, Cat does not go out of her way and is very good at not harshing Maeve's vibes, which is good because Maeve is kind of a vibe harsher herself. Yeah, she even does a little bit of that, you know, later in the event just to mess with people. Eh, but Nero is a, a big idol in this. I think it's also because Sakura Tanga can actually sing, so they were yeah. I, I'm I'm fairly certain the way this worked for the idol servants was they started looking down their VA roster and were like, hey, who works at a record label that's, like, contracted to Sony Music? And we just start pulling. We can get Aoyuki in here. We can get Sakura Tange. We can get uh, Maya Sakamoto. I definitely knew Maya Sakamoto could sing. Yes, I do believe Ishtar does have a song in Waltz, but that wasn't one of the ones they carried over and didn't make her a primary. I don't know if that means that... Uh, you know, she wasn't available for doing special recording for this or whatever. They did not hit, while everybody is represented in the bonus list, they did not hit literally every servant that was in Waltz. Who knows? Maybe once again, this is where we pray for a rerun because they haven't stopped completely doing reruns because they did that Santa Carna rerun. It's very confusing. But yeah, like I said, Infinity Queen kind of has, you know, an odd an odd couple thing going on, whereas well, Serenity... Actually, I, know what it, I know what it is. It's, it's, baby's, it's baby's first idol ban. Like that's that's literally what they are. Like they don't really necessarily have a big theme going on or a click. They just are, and that makes it very I- easy for X to you know slap them and then slide into the group. Yeah, to make it a, the, a threesome collab. Yeah, they were they were mostly carried purely by the power of uh, Maeve's personal charisma and Cat's toe beans, Catliness. Yes, her toe beans. Whereas, say later. Nito and Serenity is like, that's a really good duo, you know? They talk about how their music is, like, really somber and soulful, so, like, they have a really good combo. They are... I don't... Can you be goth idol? Probably. Yeah, totally. 
Yeah, it's definitely what their look is like. Uh, you know, we've obviously we've talked about the Mahatma team is like all about the fucking kayfabe and the story building, but also being that group that has the weird sexual tension between all the members. <laughs> because that is absolutely a marketing strategy. And then obviously our, you know, big winners at the air, you know, our final final hurdle of virtuoso are just they are the power trio who are together because the label knows that they are like the three hottest selling idols, but have absolutely no business synergy. Literally do not perform together. Yeah, they're kind of like pitched adversarially by management. So all, all in all, it's it's really nice to see all this different stuff. All the characterization is, you know, really solid. You get to build up real good bonds. This is actually one of those cases where we do an actual, you know, time loop effect. And it actually like is very meaningful and we, you know, clock it back. I and mean, so I'm glad it's only one time loop, by the way. And when, when we does happen, we don't waste any time in taking care of it. I do want to say, though... Um, you know, spoilers for these things. The fact that the final boss was a, another Miss Crane kind of was meh to me, you know, coming off of the Akahabara event. Yeah, so uh, I want to say, I feel like there's a couple of recycled ideas here. Uh, like you said, the fact that we've got, obviously the circumstances are completely different. Galatea's thing is that Galatea grail cloned herself and cut her own goddamn head off, which is yeah. crazy. But mechanically, it's the same fucking thing. You climb 100 towers and 100 floors and you fight Galatea. Um, Crane is instead a, because she's a really powerful mage plugged into the Holy Grail, she created a second terminal because I I like the context of like, okay, so she built this perfect looping playground where idols can be idols, but because she's busy managing it all the time, that means she doesn't get to engage in her hobby and follow idols. <laughs> so she created a duplicate of herself to go out and be a simp. That's pretty good. But, again, mechanically, it turns into you have to punch another Miss Crane. Yes. Similarly, while I I greatly enjoy the Maeve coverage here, right, and she gets to do some different things, Maeve was also a major supporting character in Little Big Tengu. Oh, that's like, right. She was. Yeah. I mean, that was a little bit longer ago, but that was not that long ago. Yeah, it's still I, this year. Yeah, it's still this year. I know that Nasu has said that, like, Maeve is one of his favorite servants. That is a thing he has said in the past. I think he may have said she was his favorite servant, but that was several years ago, so I do not know if that's still true. And obviously, she is one of the servants involved in the Waltz, you know, separate app and the different songs and stuff. But yeah, it's really interesting. Similarly, you know, Ushi is also in here, though obviously she gets to be part of an ensemble and not leaned on as heavily. So yeah, it's it's really interesting. I don't know if that, like, timeline-wise, I don't think this works out that that means that the script was, like, pressed because of COVID, because... Usually their their build up to events seems to be several months ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And obviously they've talked about implementation of servants is like six months to a year, depending on what exactly we're designing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know if the writers at FGO were just like Mave brained or what. Um I FGO in general does the evil clone thing a lot. I I I once again saw this in some of our editing some of our recaps over the past, you know, couple of weeks, but FGO really likes to make you fight your friends, you right. know. Almost every time a support character comes up, they're like, well, we'll arrange a battle against them, whether it's a spar or a misunderstanding or an evil clone or something. We'll make it work because it helps them save on new assets, I guess. But yeah, it's a little it's a little it's a little weird. I, I still think this event at its heart is really good. It's really, really meaningful. It's it's trying to, you know, say some stuff no, and like have some actual fu- emotional weight. I know my fucking my uh, like I said, I cried several times like, no, the story's good just yeah. in general. Like, the music's really good, the artwork's really good, the costumes are really good. And the beats, like, I don't feel like any of the beats necessarily overstate any of their welcome. Like, like basically, every, like, unlike, you were just moving from point to point to point to point, and then, you know, once you're in the moment, then you have a thoughtful discussion. Yeah, it's There's like, not okay, a... what's, our next, uh, what's our next group we're competing against, how are we prepping, etc., all the way to, you know, the big final at the showdown. And I like that... They very easily could have pulled a summer three and made us play out the whole redo week, right? Right. No, we we get terminal Miss Crane on our side, and then we immediately skip to the end. Immediately. So, like you said, it it moves at a very brisk pace. It's very well made. It's just maybe there's a couple of rough edges. I still think, as far as event stories go and layouts, it's pretty good, pretty top tier. Yeah, definitely no, my like high it. list. I love the uh, the uh, the Dream Gone Girls uh, pose story. I cried at that. That was very good. Mm-hmm. The uh, Mahatma Knights ones, that was uh, that was funny. Yeah. Virtuosa one was also funny. And I I also like that 
I alluded to it when doing the pregame, but the fact that you do kind of like the the encore, you know, the reprise at the end where you're like, all right, we got to sing the biggest song. Everybody get it here. Even the people who weren't here before. Liz gets I mean, that's, in here. I mean, that's 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 that send up of um of uh idol animes and gacha games. You know, after the like for the big bad, you know, you have to get every girl on stage to do a fucking big ass number. Yeah, it, it's it's literally a thing. And like, that's I also knew- a thing just even in like even if you don't follow those things, most people probably understand basics of like musical theater because yeah, musicals are a big cultural thing in America. True. Somehow. But that's that's the big reprise, you know. At the end, you get everybody on the stage to sing the big number and round it out again. Like it's it's yeah. part of the 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 ethos, and it really works. Especially especially when you get you know the weird cameos like the giant ghost neon and fucking Idol Girl A, <laughs> who I love how Idol Girl A's like got that delicate you know you know young Japanese lady sprite, mm-hmm. which I think might also be reused from uh, from Akihabara. I believe it is. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then her, her combat sprite is a fucking pirate. female pirate. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, so there's a lot of humor in this as well. Like, uh, obviously, Miss Crane is a big source of levity, uh, which is interesting because she's also a source of a lot of our serious moments. That conversation she has with the master about goodbyes, right? Yeah. Like, that's very poignant and very important to our overall story. Mm-hmm. But... Also, you know, she's constantly losing her mind. But yeah, it's just just some good stuff here. And like I said, just very interesting world building. Part of that, aside through Crane's memories, was just like she gets she gets summoned as a servant. She makes a bond with her master. Her master get you know gets sick before she can put your lights work. What does Miss Crane do? She fucking uses her magecraft to turn her master's designs into actual clothes, and they get popular. And then who shows up? It's the fucking mage police, baby. You're not human, are you? You must be doing a mystic. We also got confirmation that she stayed at the Sparrow Inn. Yep. Yeah, the thing that I always found weird about that is that they showed up. You're not a human, are, are you? But she wrote, like, the thing was, she basically, she couldn't actually perform any magecraft because she had to basically use all of it to keeping her spirit origin, origin from fading. So, like, Yeah, I think just the idea was that she was using mystics as the foundation to make the clothes. Yeah. Was was the concern. But yeah, it's 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 awkward. But, you know, mage gonna mage. May just uh, say no fun allowed. Yes. And this is a good, you know, like I said, uh, I think I mentioned this when I wanted, but this is a good source for a twist on the fact that she's, you know, n- she's not just a weaver, like, in the story, but also mm. is a, like, she mentions a full tailor. She does, like, all the measuring and adjustments and everything as well. I'm guessing that's, like, I'm assuming, because this is what they mentioned, like, she hasn't gone back to the Throne of Heroes since this. This yes. has all been one lifetime for her, because, and, you know, this is the whole crux of her situation, she doesn't want to go back because the moment she does, you know, she'll like lose her memories and all that time, and you know, her master will truly be gone. Yeah. So, um, like I feel like that tailoring, the 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 learning, the modern design, that was all something she learned, you know, while she, you know, was in, well, not necessarily incarnated, but was summoned. Yeah. On here, which I think is, you know, she, interesting. She obviously, picked it up from her master and kept it, and because she's still the same instance, she keeps those impressions. And yeah, we get a recap about how servants are supposed to work. You know, when you, we explicitly mentioned when you return to the, th- the throne of heroes, you lose your memories. You get to keep a record of events that happened, but they do not necessarily have the same emotional context. A lot of people have brought this up around certain interactions with like Semiramis and Amakusa, who are both, you know, different summons than Apocrypha. So they have, you know, slightly different reactions to those things and kind of, the you know, the back and forth for certain characters. I will say, at least based on lore for other servants, Miss Crane is maybe a little over concerned because it feels like a lot of servants who do get those records, like, do actually still keep some of their serious emotional context. I believe, if like I understood it correctly, like your records can be manually updated, like what um, Da Vinci did for um, us. She like manually inscribed everyone's saint graph to maintain the, the name that's why the briefcase which you know never comes up is so important mm-hmm. and but i think another one is uh, another one is that if there is a strong enough impact to a servant's incarnation it can have an effect as well yeah and this is how like some stuff gets gets left in their spirit origin and obviously that's what we talk about at the end we're like we're gonna make a song so strong we're gonna carve it into your spirit origin basically we're gonna leave you with a memory so powerful that 
the the emotions, the knowledge will still stay with you. Uh, like there's other examples of this, like um, back in the OG part one, Bedivere was not technically a servant summoned mobile by the um, by the uh, Holy Grail system, but because of his actions, his actions through that, you know, was enough of a situation for him to get recorded. Uh, I yeah, well, we happened. cannot. Well, we cannot summon that one we met, that Sir Bedivere, because he used up all of his juice in that quest. Mm-hmm. There was nothing left of that poor boy. Ooh, how did how did Merlin phrase it? A rock in the shape of a man. Yes. Yeah. But the fact that we we and other people saw him, saw his journey, and thus it was recorded in the throne. A like a what if? What if Bedivere with a magical arm showed up? And that was enough Omega. to create a new spirit origin. Omega, the Armor Core 6 Collector's Edition is $230, and I want it. Yeah, yeah, I see this. I, I see I see what's up here. Oh, it's got an exclusive steelbook. Mm-hmm. Pin badges, and of course, your own fucking tiny figurine and uh, garage. 32 centimeters. By the way, expect us to talk more about that on What's Up Tomorrow, or oh, later boy. today if you're watching this live. Those from soft, you cheeky motherfuckers. 32 centimeters isn't that big, but still. It's, bon- it's bonkly. But slipping in that, that August release, how dare. How dare! I thought I was free for August. <laughs> I was not. <laughs> no, they saw their opportunity. They're like, hmm, Final Fantasy 16 is July. And actually, Final Fantasy 16 is June. What's July? Something is in July. No, I thought, I thought. Actually, hang on. Let me double check. Is it 6? Hang on. I feel, I'm feeling dumb. That's why, that's what I also felt. I was like, wait, 16 is July, right, actually? May is tears. June is June is sixteen, I think. I know I keep switching back and forth. Yeah, June is uh, it's June the twenty second. It's late June. That's why. Late June. Okay. And then okay. I think there are still some highbrow games in July, but they're not super super concerning. But August was completely free, and then September is Starfield, and they were like, "I know what we can do." I'm still not hundred percent convinced it'll actually hit that date, just because that seems very soon after the announcement. But they did. They have at least implied that they've had a second team working on on Armored Core Six for a long time off screen, basically. So hopefully. All right. Very shocked though. The, like when they when they said you know it would come out this year, I was like, okay, there's a winter release, cool, Christmas, no, oh, summer break, shit. Okay. Yeah, no. Looking at it, yeah, no. I think the only thing I was looking forward to in um, August before was Sea of Stars. July is well, July uh, it has Legend of Heroes, Trails and Reverie, but I'm so behind on my trail games it doesn't matter. Also has Exo Primal, which was yeah. We'll keep that one open, but it's not a not a guarantee. That might be cool. It seemed Nino in the beta, from what people said, but we'll see what the final product does. But yeah, no. Um... Holy shit! Sorry, I'm 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 subbed to the the Final Fantasy 14 Reddit Twitter. I know that sounds redundant, uh, but somebody just posted an image where they got fucking three lines in Wondrous Tales. That animal! Fuck them! Fuck them! They are dead to me. Every week for two years. I can't believe yeah. we've done this. I struggle to make one line most of the time. Two lines is a wonderful week for me. But yeah, so to, to round out Grail Concert, good event, big thumbs up. The, the point slattering still doesn't feel like quite perfectly balanced, but it's an improvement in general, actually, for similar themes of like the loop and the point slatter and stuff. This event is, is very much better balanced than Summer 3. That event was long and it felt long. <laughs> yeah. It, there was a lot of good shit there, but it, 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 it really made you feel the weight of the time loop and it got a little, got a little impressive there, got a little stifling. But this one's pretty good. Got a couple of minor shortcomings. Uh, I continue to really like Miss Crane. Her design is super cool, and I like a lot of her characterization. It'll be neato to see more of her in uh, uh, what you call it the uh, the new costume shop that's going to open up. After oh, dressmaking. This. Yeah, dressmaking. Actually, this is something I'm wondering. I'm super like I know they probably just wanted to stay away from it because it's weird. But do they actually change her like her her visible name at all? Because she actually does drop her true name. At the um at the end of the event, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's like Surugi something something. But they don't they didn't do like the true name reveal. I think it is. She's still just isn't she still just Miss Crane? Yes, her normal name is just Miss Crane. Her translation is uh Tsurume no, no Kini, which let me actually it's got some English on it, but some extra accento. But let me see if we can get a good like liner translation. Oh, you're killing me, copy pasting. Because I think it's like, yeah, Tsurume no Kimi is just Crane Girl, so uh, I thought it was similar. So yeah, it's just it's it's a they kind of reversed the way the 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 reference works because in 
Japanese, like her her normal name is actually written as Miss Queen. You know, like you actually say the English, and then they're like, ah, she's you know Sudi no Kremi, just Crane Girl. This kind of goes in reverse. It seems like her normal name is just calling Miss Crane, and then she's like, my true name is Sudume no Kimi, and it's they're very similar. They mean basically the same thing. Sure it's just kind of her admitting that she is specifically that crane from that story. Because <laughs> she had, she had, she tried to deny it so long, and we're just all like, "Oh no!" When she does say it, say, it, we're like, "Oh, what a big surprise!" Oh god, the, did we mention that the humor is top notch in this as well? Yes, yes. There's a lot of funny in here. Very punchy script. So yeah, it's just a, this is just a big old breath of fresh air. Very good. Mm-hmm. I can I can look forward to hopefully similar quality when we do the. Learning with Manga collab next year. I somehow suspect that the arcade collab with the Summonable Beast class will not be as light and breezy as this. For some reason. But yeah, it's a, it's a very solid event. <sighs> Ooh, I'm looking at the timer. We've been going for two hours and 40 minutes. I think I want to push back Fanservant Friday. Because I know you all are y'all excited to talk about King Laocon. And I am too, because I've had this one on the list for a while. But it's almost half past midnight. I do need to edit this and post it. So... If we'd gotten started a little earlier, maybe, but uh, this has been going longer. We've got stuff to talk about. It's a new event. There's lots of stuff. It's cool. So, yeah, if uh, Lucky's not too insistent, we wring the blood from the stone. Nah. All right, we'll do a wrap-up. So, tune in next week. I know it's a little later, but actually, yeah, the weeks and uh, the way the weeks lined up in April was a little awkward. We did have the four, but it was kind of pushed back. So, we'll we'll wrap that up next time. If nothing else, it gives us extra stuff to talk about in case there's no, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, other extra news, but you never know. There could end up being a secret third banner. I'm, bet, I'm betting. I'm betting on a secret third banner. At, at the very least, there'll be a spicy story reveal of uh, you know Draco's other two ascensions, what I, which I'm expecting will be you know a thing. So yeah, there's there's stuff there, uh, and we'll be starting our pre-release for actually no by that by that stage because the pre-release is only in a couple of days. By that stage, we should probably have actually started the uh, Camelot Grail front, so that'll be good to catch up with. But yeah, we'll uh we'll push that other stuff and get about our business so we can get on out of here. I mean, it's time for an outro if we don't got anything else to slap them up. Yeah. So, outro goes a little something like this. Like this video. Subscribe if you haven't. Ring the bell. If I put it on the soundboard, I would put my gun click here. But just do it. Just do it! <laughs> or actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf will get you. <laughs> you bet. God damn it. I mixed memes, Lucky. Oh, they never said never do that. Full circle. Anyway, yeah, so do all that stuff. You can also leave your comments down below. But what do you think is a good joke servant? What did you think of the event, you know? How are you feeling about it? I know there's some back and forth about FGO's events and, you know, how people are feeling. It's a great time to give your thoughts on the, the whole of the thing. Hit us up there in your comments. You can also join our Discord, link in the video's description below and on our channel page. Though, be careful, we're going to be using some renovating this weekend. Just to let you can't hear it, but I'm cracking nuts. So we're hoping for some improvements there. And I do kind of agree that, uh, well, I think most of our most of our stuff that exists is well used by at least somebody. We are getting a little long in the tooth in the scrolling department. And uh, God, God knows how many times when scrolling through stuff too much, I've like accidentally clicked going into the the uh, crow rating voice channel when I'm trying to like move up into like secret gaming or like move down into you know one of the lower down chats or something. And I'm just mm-hmm. nope, click too early. There's more scroll there. See, not everyone has this problem because you can't see all the zones, but maybe that'll be part of our refresh. Anyway, join the Discord. Sub, click the bell if you've already subbed so you get our videos. Consider joining our YouTube memberships for access to membership badges and emotes. It's only $1.99 a month, and every little bit helps. Collective action makes things good. You can also support us on Patreon, like I said earlier. Get access to the audio version of this. Get access to certain videos early. Get access to the audios and the early videos for the best of compilations, if that's your thing. And it helps us out. And get the our support us on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month or approximately ten dollars a year. For one singular Saint Quartz, you can patronage us. Patronage. It's cool. Thumbs up. Alright, well, we'll be seeing you uh later today if you're watching this publicly on YouTube for What's Up? We'll be yelling about video games. A lot of video games. They keep coming. And stay tuned for future stuff. Oh, also we're back to the actual play, the AP. It came out this week. If you didn't catch it, it's cool. Yeah. Watch it. All right, that's all I got. I'll see you guys next time. Good night, everybody. Night, everybody. And boy, is it night.